What's up, guys? Welcome to the Roundtable Podcast, which I am doing pretty much every week. I think we're up to almost 10 podcasts already. Uh, remember, precision over chaos or you're screwed. You know, in Grey's on Warfare, you, you're going to have to play very, very tactically. And we're about to see some of that tacticalness pop up here because the 18th is right around the corner. I have for you Zap, Gertrude, Operator Sin, and Contractor, and we're about to get into the Mara interview on the podcast with Jesse Kazam and Veritas, who are very well known in the community of Tarkov. I mean, <laughs> everybody wants to relate these two games together, so we're going to hear quite a few different things in here. Everybody except, I believe, Operator has watched and listened to the full thing. So it's going to be a pretty damn good experience for him. We're going to be playing this on 1.25 speed. And we're going to try our best to make this in under two hours. Uh, so oh. let's get into it. Just going to start the video here. Play full everyone? screen. Welcome to the podcast. Our show dedicated to talking about all the progress quality. in life. Like music, content creation, and video games. Yeah. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. Uh, and I am Veritas. And today we are uh, uh, very fortunate to have uh, Mara here. Um, I actually yeah. don't know your official title. I've heard co-founder, lead dev, creative director. Are you all of the above, or is there some better title for, <laughs> for you? I don't know. Like I think I love the creative director. I am CEO because I have to be. Uh, I'm, you know, <laughs> I was lead programmer a lot of like the years. Now I am programming also, just because we have like a few people on the beginning. And uh, yeah, in the past I was doing everything, you know, when we grow up. So we were growing up, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. basically, um, you, you've been working on um, Grey Zone Warfare, a game that basically everybody is <laughs> is excited about. Um, we, we're all super stoked. Um, so yeah, Jesse, I don't know, do you uh, did you have anything yeah. you want to start with? Or? So thank you so much for for taking the time with us. Uh, yeah, we're you know some, me and Veritas kind of, of Grey Zone popped on our radar a while back when we saw the first few trailers and have just been kind of following it super closely uh, ever since. You know, coming from you know what i've noticed is a lot of people from a i think gray zone is getting a lot of different types of people excited i've seen people from you know like the more survival game community be excited i've seen people from like extraction shooter games you know me and veritas you know played a lot of tarkov excited i think milsim you, know, what you guys yeah milsim people i think you guys have kind of blended a lot so kind of my first question is kind of where did the inspiration for gray zone come from and and are you guys kind of intentionally blending a lot of these aspects from a lot of these other games into kind of one experience Okay, um, there is like the two answers for it, you know, one is, yeah. the, one is the honest and one is the politically correct. Uh, <laughs> so, the honestly, when we are uh, starting to thinking about the new game, and we were looking with the, at the times with the new virus about the market, we did probably the first market research ever in our history. And uh, we were trying to position us on the mobile space and where we can uh, win the fight against the big brands, you know? And mm. then it was like the five to five, PVE, PVP, you know, this kind of the genre. And uh, we were more like the, you know, we were afraid of the five to five because, uh, you know, there was rumors that the big games are coming. There was a lot of rumors that Destiny is coming, for example, or, oh. Games, you know, Battlefield, all these like the big brands, which like the, they have a really big advantage compared to you. And uh, they have a lot of better attention because In this people video, are I'll be survive everything because it's just a big brand, you know? Yeah. And uh, and uh, because we failed with the Shadowgun War games, which was five to five, we were not confident to do like the pure multiplayer game because it's not so easy. It's not just about the shooting and network code. It's about the balancing, how we are using the things. And we still didn't crack why, it's, uh, why it didn't work, you know, why, mm -hmm. for example, Valorant is working. And uh, we found out later, but, uh, you know, at the time we just uh, were not balls, you know, to try it again. <laughs> and uh, there was like the Battle Royale stuff, which was already uh, on the peak. So it was so uh, visible that it will fall down like the, the you know, it will just mm. became the, like the old. And uh, we were moving more to the PvE, PvP stuff, you know, something like yeah. the, what we did with the Shadowgun Legends. But we wanted to do it a little bit differently. We want to do it more hardcore-ish because we saw like the space and we were still thinking about the mobile. But when we make the first concept, which is a little bit, you know, it's it's like the fifty percent different what it was on the, what is now. Then we realized that uh, you know at, before that we also you know I push everybody in the company, mostly the designers, to read every book about the design and uh, read the uh, and play the games. You know, we select like the billions of the games and just play them. You know, for the few months. Yeah. And of course, one of the game was Tarkov or this kind of the hardcore -ish games. And we were thinking like the more about like the you know doing the hardcore stuff, like the tactical stuff, and mix it with the PVE thing 
and we also know that uh, a lot of people were complaining about the multiplayer in or PvP in the Tarkov. So <laughs> and a lot of people were like the saying, "Hey, I want to play the single player. You know, I want to like to do only PvP." Mm. And um, so we were thinking, "Hey, there is like the you know some market." And uh, the other market research was that. Uh, Okay, so then we move to the, you know, because we're starting to uh, moving to the Tarkov stuff and uh, then the UI is very complicated, you know, it's very hard to do it on the mobile. Yeah. And uh, so then we said like, okay, the concept it sounds great, you know, but uh, it's not possible to, read, to do it on the mobile screen. So let's move, you know, let's like the, the market is already screwed on the mobile, you know, there is all the user acquisition KPIs, it's not like the, about the games anymore, it's mostly about the monetization and retention. Mm. So we said like, okay, go away. And then the start, you know, I wanted to say something different, but <laughs> <laughs> you feel free by all means. Uh, you can, yeah. you can, you can say whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if there is like some kind of the young guys, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we're, we're definitely not G rated. Uh, no. okay, okay, okay. So, so uh, we move like the, to the, to the PC and then the things start to like the be more and more, um, how to say, uh, like they're starting to be more. Uh, like the complicated or we're trying to start to make the most sophisticated game it's like the mm. you know when we look at the market on the pc and we found all this stuff uh, which happening on the on the market with the triple a studios like the killing their brands you know the color of yeah. the, the cats you know the the battlefield like the, their new version completely like the different everybody wants battlefield free and they are creating something completely different um all right guys so check out what he just said he made basically everybody working on the game in the company, from what I understood, play Tarkov. How fucking insane is that? That's I'm very, very sure. good. But um, I, I would have been pulling my hairs sure. out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that goes against some code of ethics, you know? I don't yeah. think you're allowed to force I, I, people I'm, to I'm also, um, play I, I such think a horrible there's... experience. I think there's some some draw for some other games here too because if we if we look at this from how 90% of the outside community not talking about the discord because a lot of us have different opinions yeah, here yeah. um 90% of the uh, of the people interested in this game are looking at this as a Tarkov comparison I believe this draws a major On comparison the market, the AAA studios. in other games I I see a lot of Daisy in this game the gameplay yeah. loop just yeah. everything like it's a it's very inspired by those open world survival shooters and he did talk about that about or uh, i believe it was uh kazam he talked about drawing in from like survival shooters extraction shooters um battlefield like games even he he popped battlefield 3 off i love that statement because that's what i want out of dice i want another battlefield 3 <laughs> i will never see it dice is too greedy at this point but i loved his statement there where he talked um talked about going into the market and looking because this yeah. development company came over from mobile development and they were their project was too ambitious for uh, you couldn't play gray zone on an iphone it'd be impossible so, <laughs> and, i think i think they I was, played the games uh, the first six months like they just went to work played games for six months just to sure. learn yeah i for think creative says it later. direction yeah, yeah, yeah like like how we're gonna build it let's borrow some from there some from there like well, that's how a lot of games are drawing stuff. Hell, yeah. the whole reason the battle, uh, the, the extra, not extraction shooters, battle royales took off was because of PUBG. Uh, yeah, and I, that battle royale movie that came out—that's what inspired just, PUBG, actually. Just yeah. remember, PUBG was the first like battle royale of its its time. I I'm not. Was, no, wasn't H1 C1 the first one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was yeah. the first never... one. It I never, never caught that. traction, though. Yeah, it not it caught traction. Not to work. Okay. Yeah. It caused the mod developer that did H one C one. He did a shit job. BR, BR, uh, he made PUBG, I think. No, what? it wasn't Player Unknown. Player what? Unknown made mods for Arma, which is what I was going to go into. Oh, uh, to both, okay. Both yeah. Czech devs, I think they're playing a lot of Arma, and I think that yeah. some of their developers have came from Arma. I believe I've looked through their LinkedIn and I, I yeah. saw some. Arma it's modding is a whole, whole different level. We're talking about scripting AI and everything else. I a lot of good devs come from Arma modding because it takes a it takes an intellectual to make mods on that game. Oh no, I'm it saying is... like actual in-house Bohemia interactive devs, not just oh modders. oh yeah, okay. They're, I both, they're both they're both uh, based in and around Prague. Okay, that makes sense. I was going with it in a sense that like um, so I and. 
a lot of people probably feel the same way that they know PUBG as the first battle royale pretty much because I guess it caught traction. That's why I didn't know about H1Z1. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure Tarkov, uh, Nikita seen battle royale and how something was so different and so good and he was inspired to make Tarkov the way it is. Not not the way it is now because we all know why it, it is mm. the way it is now. All the fucking streamers and shit. I think but, um, he said that in the interview as well. Back yeah, in the day. but uh, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I, I think I remember hearing something about that because my first time on PC was like 2017 and then I picked up PUBG. I was shit. I picked up Tarkov because my buddy wanted a tactical game. That was scary as fuck in the beginning. And then I went on to Rainbow Six Siege, which I played the fuck out of on Xbox and just... You nerd. Dude, it was insanely great. My, my experience with these top three games right off the bat was fucking phenomenal. But um, to carry on, basically, he relayed uh, about 2042, Battlefield uh, 2042 and Battlefield 3. And I'm, I'm more of a... Dude, Battlefield 4 was fucking amazing. Now, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 was like prime Battlefield. I'd even, I'd even include Battlefield 1 in there because I genuinely did enjoy that oh, game. Oh, shit, it was no. A good game. I, I, I fucking You didn't like it? it? I love nah, every gun being single action. Yippee. Bolt action Ooh, so, only. Just so, don't, like, run, don't run Rifleman. You'll be fine. Basically bringing it back to a sense where like the gaming company stopped listening to gamers. So yeah. they made a great game with Battlefield fucking 3. Okay, why not? Just do the same thing. Battlefield 4, they did basically the same thing. But I think what Marek didn't like about Battlefield uh, 4 was the server issues and stuff like that in the beginning. Because I don't see anything else that really strayed away from Battlefield 3. They just made a better game. Not really. Uh, I, I, I would there say... There was a lot they, of uh, cosmetics. Like cosmetics? Yeah. Yeah. They, they also ripped apart the infantry combat battlefield 4 battlefield 3's infantry combat was satisfying the guns felt good everything else battlefield 4 feels clunky if you go from battlefield 3 to battlefield 4 like yeah it's been take a comparison from 4 to hardline um oh they're God. no hard, okay hardline had a horrible game loop don't get me wrong it was boring but the gunplay felt good the guns actually felt like they had stopping power they actually felt like they handled well i genuinely did enjoy hardline's gunplay i never played multiplayer i was a campaign guy but um, just, just because I didn't have Xbox Live when that game dropped. <laughs> but um, they they ripped apart Battlefield 3. They made the vehicle combat much more enjoyable in 4. I will, lie, I will not lie. With all of the different and loadouts you can bigger, put on your Yeah, and stuff. much bigger maps for yes. vehicle combat. Because Battlefield 3 was... You had vehicle combat, but the maps were not designed for vehicle combat. No, it was way too close. Four, to yeah, 4 had lots of more open maps. So they fixed one thing and kind of destroyed something else. It was more yeah. uh, uh, like, oh, what's a space game? It has like a thousand player on us, like huge. It's on Steam. Yeah, they made it more like that, like more open maps of vehicles can uh, can go, but all the infantry... Oh, Planetside 2? Are you talking about Planetside 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Planetside, it's a wonderful yeah. game, but it's been ruined because the developers don't care about it anymore. Yeah, no, um, but like the the infantry fighting there is the same as Battlefield Four, basically. Yeah, and it's then, it's and then kind of mid, but the vehicles came are awesome. And then shrunk the whole thing back down to I, medium size, but yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna continue with this. All right, let's see what we got here, baby. It, you know, this was about the big guys, like the badasses. You know, now you have this kind of the. I cannot say like the weird characters, but like the different characters for yeah, the yeah. Right, you know? So a lot of people are abandoning this space and uh, they are basically became the upset, you know? So we yeah. said like, okay, so the big companies abandoning this space, you know, these hardcore guys who wants like the more mature games play as the big asses, you know, and then like the, then uh, uh, let's go for it, you know? So yeah. we make like the, how many uh, copies was sold by the, for example, different games. And uh, we said, okay, that's good space for us. We also found that, um, mostly the 
indie studios are trying to make the tactical games, you know, that like the, the, the AAA guys doesn't have the balls again, you know, it's like the, we know like the, they are trying to make the DMZ and these kind of things, but we were 100% sure that they didn't understand why people playing Tarkov, you know, or if they understand mm -hmm. it, they will never be yeah. able to put it exactly. I, I want to hit off this point because he mentioned something I've, I've personally had conversations with people in the past about. I hate the fact AAA developers are not willing to take risks and big shots. Yeah. And no, they're anymore, sticking to the same formula over and over and over again. And the little changes and just, they make backfire. Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2. It, it, like, Quad 2019 Modern Warfare was, like, peak for me. I love that game in every capacity. Then Modern Warfare 2 was crap. Modern Warfare 3 was crap. Not yeah. so crap, but it just... The DMZ was cool, but after a while, it got repetitive and boring. Yeah. Battlefield I, 2042. It took them so long to get that game to a point where it was actually enjoyable. And I still don't really enjoy it. I and have it. It was still fucked by the end. Like, yeah. There was, there was too late. Yeah, too it, little, it was... Late. I was hyped for that game. But again, where Battlefield messed up was the fact that they teased so many features that never got put into the game, like vehicle launching. It was in the trailer. It was in the trailer in the, in the uh, sandbox mode. And it was never a thing. It you never have... got put into the game. You can't launch vehicles I... as before anymore. No, you know no but I, th I think it got... Put in the game, like someone it found it in the I, code. I haven't, yeah, I haven't uh, found it. Someone found in, uh, someone found it in the code, but it wasn't like activated or whatever. And then when that spread out, they deleted the code. I was like, no, it's not in the game. <laughs> <laughs> the Dude. so j just to touch on 2042 real quick, where they fucked up was blending Call of Duty with 2042. Let me explain. And Overwatch, too. They threw in all these extra the, operators with these special yeah, abilities that just didn't need yeah. to be there. It, the, the it had no right being in no. a good game. That, they, they made it very fucking stupid, in my opinion. It, in the beginning, it was okay, the gameplay portion where you're infantry. It was okay. What a, it wasn't that bad. But it was, Are we not going to talk about the closed beta? And how far the fact that you would shoot a gun within five meters of someone and your bullets would just go around him. They messed up so bad in the beginning. Yeah. The bloom I... was just complete crap. I've seen Halo bloom at the originals better than that. And that game was produced in 2001, too. The game came out when I was like a baby. <laughs> no, they, their beta was scuffed. I remember playing the open beta. I, I bought early access for it. Um, it, dude, you we, vehicles would fly through buildings. The AP or the hovercraft would go up the side of the skyscraper. Like there was so many oh, things. I that, that. It, it was a. It, I'm not gonna lie. I had I had more fun about it for 2042 when it was broken than it was fixed. Yeah. Because by the time it was fixed, it was a sweat fest. To everybody who just kept playing it. It dude, was we, just and, constant. We played the fuck out of Hazard Zone so much. If you joined in with four people, you were king of the map. Oh yeah, because no one squatted up in Hazard Zone because it was it was so bare bones. Dude, it, it was so easy. It oh, was yeah. kills and, after kills, every, wins after wins. Everyone liked Battlefield three and four. Yeah. Just what? because of the thing with you are not the MC of the of the world. Like Battlefield uh, Battlefield twenty forty two two. Like, oh, you are the main character. You have special abilities. Everyone else is also main character. Have fun. Like, and yeah, it, switching scopes on the fly. Like, what the fuck? I I liked that system because technically you can switch scopes mm -hmm. on the fly. You can take a picket yes, off and, and then the yes, span of ten seconds. Like, oh no, You're he's far away. I'm just gonna switch. Growth. I'm just gonna yeah. switch up scope. Like, and then I kill him from long range. Oh, I'm gonna switch to like I, back to a hollow have, site. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. They should have switched it. Like. To, they it was a cool it, like feature. You can only yeah. you can only mod it the first ten seconds. So you're uh, you're actually spawn in or whatever. You shouldn't be able. Or maybe to... maybe you go to like a weapons crate or an attachments crate on points, and you could swap your yeah, attachments or, or whatever. Out. But yeah, Battlefield three and four, they uh, everyone liked because you were in a squad. You were infantry engineer. Everyone worked together to like do that. Like twenty 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 forty two is just. It felt like a free to play shooter. Yeah, it, like it literally felt like it was just 
something else entirely. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't I, definitely okay. I will say me. I enjoyed the sandbox mode where they let you go back to like and get the old vehicles and the old weapons and different maps and stuff like that. That was cool. I I messed with some of those custom lobbies, but that was the only highlighting experience of 2042 for me. The only highlighting experience, and it wasn't even that good. It just got me inspired to go play Battlefield Five again because I was a huge Battlefield Five fan. Because you know, tigers are king. Uh, anyways, <laughs> back to back to what I'm trying to wrap this up around. I just wish AAA developers would make big leaps into decisions because I feel like yes. if Gray Zone does drop and it releases on a tremendous state and it works out perfectly, like we're all hoping it does, it's going to inspire these other developers to go, "Hey, these guys came from fucking mobile devices, and in two years." produced an absolute top quality game that a lot of people enjoyed and they have no experience in PC development. Well, no experience as a company. I'm not saying they haven't brought on developers that have done it in the past, but as a company and a directive, they're coming from a very, how do I put this? Inexperienced mindset. I feel like that's kind of bad because they have Devil Dog, which I think Devil Dog is adding a bunch to this because him being, he's, he wasn't military. I'm not mistaken on that, right? No, he's, yeah, from what I know, yes. So yeah, with that, being have someone in the military is going to bring a lot of realism, which is the reason I'm so inspired in this, because a lot of developers need to take on opinions of people who have been in situations like this, because it's going to help your vision go m- turn out much better. Don't they have yeah. the Merc as well, or is that Devil Dog? Uh, the the I'm Merc not sure. they had for like recording all the reloads and stuff? I'm not sure. It it could yeah. be, or I I was told um uh Demolition Ranch is his brother. Who I'm not sure. uh, Operation uh, Operator Trusky? And I I don't know. I don't know exactly. No, wait, 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 it, wait. it is wait. Operator Drewski? No no no. Op- yeah, Operator Drewski is Demolition Matt's uh, oh, brother. Oh okay, okay. Not okay. Devil Dog. <laughs> Not devil. I, I I might have had that uh, fucked up. Then I might have had that fucked up. Sorry. sorry. Uh, Maybe yeah, they're all the brothers. Thing, Who knows? <laughs> the one thing about the big companies is developers don't make decisions anymore. It's the fucking suits. That's the problem. Yeah. The suits say we want this, and it's like okay, we can do this. Like no, 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 no. We have this formula here. Let's stay with it because that's the only thing the financial money people know they know they know formulas they don't like they're kicking themselves in their ass i know exactly what you're trying to say yeah like they are financial people they aren't game developers so why the fuck did they have a say in it well yeah that's and when an indie game gets big enough instead of like okay let's do this let's keep good doing this they always sell out always like come on well, my thing I know is... you want money, but like I know you want money, but why don't you just keep going at the pace you are? You're gonna get to the end where you get money. It's just gonna take a bit longer, and then you this won't is... have a community to hate you. Because... One of the my oh, thing God. is the uh, so the market research. Obviously, Mara did his fucking market research because look yeah. what they're bringing, and look how many different sides of the spectrum. Of people there are that's interested. I've yeah, never seen so many simple. people interest in see, uh, being interested in a title of this capacity. Like, is when it comes to indie games, I've never seen so many people interested in a game like this. Yeah, ever. The, the point basically oh, is it's... just do market research. Don't make a fuck game. Like, dude, they, Battlefield, Dice, all whoever is fucking doing this shit right now, EA. I I don't know the whole fi- fucking fiasco of what's going on right now with what they're doing to destroy the new games. This is the future. How are you going back asswards right now? Look at Battlefield so, 3. Okay. Look at Battlefield 4. Go back to what people complained about both sides of them and what did they want? Build a game. I have that. good news Period. for Battlefield fans because I want to bring this up because I saw it on a YouTube video from a really good friend of mine. They are returning to their roots. They openly came out with the la- with the release of this last season that's coming up. They had the product project window. They're now focusing on the next Battlefield. We're going to be Battlefield Six. It's going to be going back to the roots based around '90s to late or early 2000s conflict, and it's going to return with the old class system with improvements would, on game features. Yeah, I would actually be fine if they did it with Russia Ukraine. Well, I, oh I genuinely, <laughs> I, I want a game around that conflict. 
yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, want to like, have a game around that modern conflict. Like, so, the, <laughs> the Battlefield 6 uh, with Russia and Ukraine would be fucking awesome because you have all the all the countries in the world sending weapons there so you can just like oh yeah every ukraine can have any weapon the russia can only have russia weapons mm -hmm. so that would be fucking awesome let's um, and sorry yeah, i didn't mean to but, interrupt yeah no no no, no. I don't, Wait, I this don't can always so. be an after podcast discussion let's get back to the pod god damn it yeah that's exactly what i was gonna fucking say i was like <laughs> you know what i actually am interested in making a video on this now so let's save that yeah, for another chapping. podcast. Good idea. Yeah, 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 Good pretty idea. much. Get this out, get this out, get this out. I've been doing my Duolingo for like the past half hour, dude. Please say, like, I'm learning Japanese, but I've got it about the bumpers of the flyers, you know? Then, you know, they are not, they cannot behave like Nikita, for example, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we know that there is like the really uh, small competition from the, or little competition from the big guys. And yeah. uh, we were thinking a little bit, I don't know how to say like arrogantly that we can be better than most indie guys, you know, like the, these kind of the free guys making the tactical games and whatever. So we move like the, there and uh, we also switched to the Unreal. You know, in the beginning, there was not big map, like the 42 square kilometers. We were afraid okay. of it. You know? Interesting. There was, there was several small maps, you know, which you basically travel around, you know. So uh, because we didn't, we were afraid that we will not be able to run 42 square kilometers in the jungle, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like the slowly change, you know, it's like the people yeah. who are scared, you know, then we get like the really good guys who create, who were working on the Terran editor for decades, you know, and uh, they, uh, you know, they were working on some game in the Hangar 13, they killed their game, and they, of course, became a little bit upset, and it, it just said, you know, at the time, you know, so so I asked them, hey, maybe we can do something together, like the VR really wants to push, and uh, yeah, they just make this stuff for us. So, yeah. That's, that's I mean, <laughs> that's awesome to hear. It's cool to see because I, from a basically from like a gamer's perspective, have thought a lot of those same things where like the kind of vacuum hole in the market has went, where like I've played some survival games, I've played some Milsim games, I've obviously played a lot of Tarkov, and you don't see a whole lot of people doing it, or at least under... It's so funny to hear you say there, that by the way. Call of Duty didn't understand why people play Tarkov. And yeah, so they started on a new topic uh yeah so about the how they went from uh several small maps to big uh, to one big one i think that saved their game quite a lot actually if they would have kept oh, small maps, everyone would be calling this a tarkov copy yeah yeah, yeah exactly. honestly everyone was yeah Dude, the persistent world thesis or how, however you want to fucking call it yeah. they brought into the fucking spectrum is what that caught my them. eye, bro. Yeah, that's what that's caught my eye. Because as a Bethesda game fan, oh. I'm so tired of so many loading screens. It is yeah. genuinely aggravating as someone who went through Starfield on both sides of the major conflicts. Oh, I yeah, genuinely yeah. am tired of loading screens. Like, I do not want to deal with them anymore. We are in 2024. There are processors coming out that are equal to what NASA put people on the moon with for the eighth time in 2008. There's no reason why we should have all these loading screens at the same time. It's ridiculous. And I they, love the fact no, 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 that... Yeah, they are too cheap. Most of the companies are too cheap to have it because it costs more money to have the servers running uh, for that. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like, it, they, are, it should we're, be, we're should be a, a standard. Point. We're coming to a point where some games are, or there's uh, there's games coming out now that are considered quadruple A games. Like I don't know, Sea of Thieves, which was a massive flop. Like how do you no, spend no, no, that no, much Lex, money and yeah. that much time developing something? I played the open beta. I genuinely refunded my pre-order copy of Sea of Thieves. I or not uh, Sea of Thieves. You but, uh, you mean you mean you mean the, the Black Flag uh, thing? Yeah. The, oh, what is the name of that game? Oh, Skull and Bones. I, I Skull yeah, and Bones, Skull not Sea of Thieves. Skull uh, and Bones. Dude, piece of why? Shit game. Why? Well, how do you how do you take a game from 2000 what 14 uh, I think it was it's yeah, almost 10 years yeah. old now and get rid of everything that made that game good and then come out with the naval combat from it it wasn't even the naval combat from it it was, it was worse the, uh, somehow no, no, so the early so the early copies or the early trailers was actually just black flag combat and everyone was so hyped because it was only black flag combat it was only that but at sea like you can still board people and stuff and then yeah they had to reset the fucking game like four times, I think. Like, they scrapped the game four or five times. Yeah, I know. Because uh, multiple devs who are now off the yeah. team and didn't end up finishing it straight up came out and said 90% of the office had no idea what the game was even supposed to be. 
Yeah, it's, it's they didn't still, know the yeah. setting of it. They didn't know anything. Yeah. They were just asking to make assets. And when you have multiple departments unaware of the game's goal and future working separately from each other on the same game, it's going to come out to a dog yeah. water game like Skull and Bones released in. And it's probably going to remain that way for, I don't know, a year and a half while they try to yeah. fix the game up and bring it up to speed. Because that game feels they, like it came out in 2011, not 2024 or 23 when it released. It like, does not a, feel like a modern game. I should probably say, probably say, shouldn't say this, but that feels like a Twink game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Twink in real life. Yeah, there it you is. Know, like a Twink, yeah, you know, like a Twink in real life, but yes. that in game form, it really feels like that. It really does. Yeah, it's like, it, oh, uh, let's pu put the purple hair on every on pirates and hairs and like uh, stales all purple. You know how much purple uh, cost? Only kings could have it back in the day. Like anyway, they're yeah. kings. <laughs> back to back to what uh, back to what people were saying in the video. Yeah. Great, uh, uh, I was. For <laughs> Yes, I would like to not talk about a Ubisoft game, and I'd like to talk about what uh, Mara just said about Hangar 13. Yeah, yeah good yes. idea. Because Hangar I 13, have to, I if you don't know, made a mafia games. Are you going? Are you? Are you done? <laughs> um. Yeah, Hangar 13. Uh, created. Um, Mafia 3, and then Mafia Def Definitive Edition. Uh, both ran on Unreal Engine 4. Uh, and it's really good that it seems like Hayden Blackman, the original founder of Hangar 13, may be working with uh, Madfinger Games. I can't find any confirmation on LinkedIn or anything along those lines, but uh, he stepped down two years ago around the time after, uh, about a couple of months after they had Vault cancelled, which was the project Mara just talked about there with Hangar 13. Yeah. yeah. That scares uh, that's me. That's pretty good. I did, Why does that scare you? I did not enjoy Mafia 3. I found it very repetitive. I found its systems very basic. It was literally after you got through a certain point in the main story, running around the map, killing people, taking over buildings, and building up an empire. It was just repetitive, and I got bored after about 15 hours. Well, they aren't doing the game dev. They aren't doing the game design part. They're doing okay, good. The I just want to make sure that they're not they're not they, the people that are focusing on the game. They design. were told. Basically, they were told by Take Two to create a third edition of Mafia. Basically, how does it look, engine wise? Correct. That's what you mean. Yeah. How yeah Mafia it Three look and run. Well, Mafia Three was a beautiful game and it ran really well. I'm not gonna lie. I ran it on a really crap PC. And that was on the and that was on the previous. Yeah, that was on four. Of, that wasn't even on yeah. five. Yeah, that's what's good. That's, but that I, also, I do like, like that the map part of it. size, right? Like the map size is equal. It, it was or... huge. Yeah, the they had the entirety of like New Orleans and some of the southern parts of the of the bogs in there, and they did a really good job on the map size. It was oh. pretty large. It I'm was, gonna, I'd uh, say, around now. fifteen to twenty 40, kilometers. Forty-five square kilometers. Yeah. That's... So there are they they're already familiar with the engine and the yeah. map size that they're working with. Yeah. So okay, that that that's... gives me hope for this. It does. Okay, never mind. I have got confirmation that Hayden does not seem to be working with, uh, at least at some Madfinger Games. However, he has founded a new company called Escape Velocity uh, Gaming, which uh, does uh, all of the engine stuff. They they do. Uh, okay, so they're like a subcontractor. Art. They could potentially be the subcontractor for Madfinger Games. Okay. Escape Velocity Entertainment, you mean? Entertainment, yeah, one? sorry, I've just got... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and replay the video now. Oh, let's get back into it. Yeah. And that's why DMZ failed? Because I've said that so many times where I'm like, DMZ was fun, but you could tell that they don't understand why people want this type of game. So to hear you say that, it's just so funny because I've come to so many of those realizations from the gamer perspective of like wanting something else in this genre from people who kind of understand why we play these games. Um, and then, and I think most gamers would agree with the sentiment of these big AAA brands wanting to make billion dollar games and they're stuck in franchises that they've been in, you know, Battlefield, Call of Duty. They've been in these franchises for so long and they don't know what they want to do with them. They want to sell a lot of copies, but then they want to try something new, but it all has to kind of be I in the brand. <laughs> and so I think you guys were afforded that flexibility of coming with something new and fresh and nobody has yep. expectations of what it's supposed to be. 
that's what gets me excited for sure. Mm. I, I think I understand like these big guys, you know, it's not so easy like to make some kind of the very hardcore games when the development costs like the hundreds of the millions, you know, you are risking yeah. a lot. And uh, what I don't understand is like the, why they are killing their brands, you know, why they are not like making the new game, you know, why they are not creating the new game, why they are using the Ghost Recon stuff for the like the something which is not related to the Ghost Recon, you know. Yeah. So, but maybe the people think that it's like good to use this brand and it's actually opposite, you know, so. I assume yeah. that the big AAA dev companies are probably like every big software company that I ever worked for, which is a bunch of people way high up at the top, mm. so disconnected from everything. Mm. They're the ones signing the checks and, you know, they just don't, I don't know. Um, it's like, the, I think in the game dev, the most, at least what I, I hate like the, when the people are like the complaining about the management because most management are ex devs, right? They rise up, you know, not so You get promoted players. out of being a developer yeah. into being but, a manager. So they make like the good games, they move up, and now they are like the bitching yeah. about them, like the, the, they are like the no gamers, but they actually, I think the gamers. But I think the, it's about the responsibility and like the big accountability mm -hmm. that you just cannot afford it, you know. So yeah. you 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 talked um, you've talked a bunch about PVE being a, a focus and how how important PVE is going to be for the game. Um, it seems to me to be a a really big challenge how you can make this genre work with PvP. <laughs> Right, because on one hand, you want the PVE interactions to be skill-based. Um, on the other hand, you don't want it to be so easy that there's no threat, there's no, you know, anything like that. So it seems to me like you need to find a balance between how how often you fight and win against AI versus how often you just get one tapped in. You know what I mean? So is that, like, how do you look at, at designing AI and fighting yeah. AI philosophically um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the Dark Souls, you know, it's like the, you know, what, it's like the, when you are really skilled and you have like the, even the good items and good skills in the Dark Souls, you can do pretty nice dancing around them, but you make the one mistake and you are dead, you know, you just yeah. lost everything. I think this is, will happen in our game, you know, it's like the, because you can one up the guys, you know, so if you are careful and uh, you see them first, you, it can be, it can sound really easy. But if you will make the mistake, you will be just one topped, you know, and or died, you know, or you will um, uh, alarm the other guys, you know, or maybe you yeah. will attack the PvP guy, you know. There is like a, it's not a, in our uh, uh, hands to somehow balance it, you know, because this is one tap, you know, and a lot of things is, we don't have the dice rolls that like the, hey, one tap him or not, you know, yeah. or like the, he's playing five hearts, so let's one tap him, you know, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> or he died five times, so don't one tap him. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that would be, that would be like a, the, a great the, feature. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, in the reality, you know, it's like the shit happens, you know, sometimes. For sure. It's like the, we, we saw it like the, 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 the Marek Mundlo, you know, the, the designer who played the games, he saw like the, sharp eyes that he see the enemy where I don't see anything, you know, mm. and he just won't up them. I think he's cheating, you know, it's like, <laughs> a, he's so crazy. And um, this was like the way the uh, trailer became the boring, you know, because he was just one tapping them like the, from the 50 meters, you know, I see like, yeah. don't shoot immediately, like the wait a little bit, but uh, he's also a little bit afraid to die. So he just won't up them on the big, big, uh, big distance. So I really don't know, you know, I, I, I you know, I should not say it like the, uh, that I don't know what happened. I think like the, I know what will happen, yeah. but I'm not sure. You know, it's like the, we have we are we don't have the we are try we, we make different system for the aiming for the AI. You know, than like the, in the normal games. In the normal games, you aiming on the exact point, mm -hmm. and this means that like the it's 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 very hard to make the uh, bad aiming because the dot is like the it's it's just the point right, and it's the point is same like the if you are five meters or one hundred meters, it's same. Yeah. So we make something different. We make like that they are trying to aim at you, and they are selecting based on the based on the skills, based on the, some other stuff, some uh, point around you, and then the point is coming like to you. And when they are shooting, it's moving up. You know, when they are like the moving, it's moving up. You know, whatever. Interesting. But they are also shooting from the gun. You know, they don't have the direction like in the other games. In the past, we have always firing direction, which we try to rotate. Now it's handled by the animation. So I'm waiting until they aim at you, at least to some distance. And then I press the trigger, you know, gotcha. and then something happens, you know. So sometimes they are shooting around you. Sometimes they hit you. It's really like the randomize, you know, and um, that's cool. It's, it's it's like in the life, you know, it's like they sometimes yeah. can hit you. They even have like the, when they are injured, they have like the, some kind of the stuff that they are not able to aim like the, to you. And oh. uh, we just need to balance it. You know? So I yeah. think like you, you mentioned Dark Souls and I think the, the, 
one of the most significant aspects of games like Dark Souls or other games that I think are like truly skill based. Another example is um, I don't know if you ever saw or played Mordhau, um, but uh, that that game is a game where if someone is twenty percent better than you, you can't win. <laughs> you can't accidentally win. In a shooter, you could get lucky with a headshot, right? Um, yeah. So the AI in Dark Souls, right? There's like patterns, there's rules, there's timings. People have the ability to learn how they telegraph their attacks. So you can get better at knowing how to respond. Um, yeah. Is that even a thing? I, like, I don't even know how you could put anything like that into a shooter. Is that something that you think about? Or, you know, like, for example, they would yell before, you know, before they shoot yeah. or something like that, right? Yeah, they start to bitch, you know, when they see you. So they like the, like the start to like the saying something and you have probably one second. I think... Uh, you know, we have this kind of the emotion system. So when they see you, the the emotions for the for the aggressiveness is going up, based on like the, if you are looking at him, if mm -hmm. you already shoot or whatever. It's still not like the taking the distance because they are reacting same if they see you from the five meters or one hundred meters. So I want to implement some kind of the surprise. So when you meet together like immediately, they will immediately shoot. You know the pulp fiction. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So so uh, this is what this is why they now like they can kill anybody faster if they are quick enough because when they see you they have around the one second until they start to shoot. So we need to fix it. And uh, but like the, when the fight is starting, it's like the, there is not uh, like the how do they call it in the Dark Souls the these first frames. So uh, oh the eye oh, frames. Yeah. Yeah. So where you where they're basically like, are you talking about like when you roll, you're invincible for a window or? No, no, no. Like the oh, it's like the it's special word for it. I just forget about it. It's like the, when they are starting to attack, so you have some time to basically react. You know? Oh, they yeah, like they a go. telegraph. Like you yeah, see like, that they're about to do this like, swing versus animation. this swing. Like the the yeah. that basically the animation hint telling you what's about to happen or? Yes, yeah. exactly. You know. But uh, this is, you know, of course, if you will see that he's taking the grenade, you have like the, some time like the, to do yeah. it. With the trigger, there is not possible to do it, you know, so. For sure. Um, and I think that like from a 10,000 foot view, like more philosophically, you know, what Dark Souls does really well, because obviously it's good as inspiration, but it's not a shooter, kind of like you were saying, so it's very different. But I think that concept of what's great about games like Dark Souls is that like if you die, there's almost always something to learn from that encounter. Always. And, and it was like, probably your fault. Or yeah, almost I definitely. didn't know he was going to do that or you're like learning your enemy or you know what I mean? I made a mistake. Like you said, I make one mistake and a mistake. And so I think that as kind of like the ethos is a really good place to be because I think that's what in games, in some of the hardcore games I've played, you know, obviously I've played a lot of Tarkov, but even in, you know, Marauders or a Cycle or some of these other games that I've tried to do this, dying, but especially in Tarkov, when you die and you feel like you knew what you did and you messed up, that's a better feeling to be like, I, I need to try that again. It's better than, you know, an if, if an AI just spawned right in front of you and killed you. And you're like, there's just like, that feels bad because, you know, you lost your gear, you lost whatever, but there wasn't even any knowledge to gain. It was like, that was so far out of my control. So I think obviously, you know, Dark Souls and, and, and Grey Zone are going to be so different because they're shooters and there'll be challenges when you're talking about like bullets and triggers and they fly real fast. But I think that concept of like, creating experiences where you are they're hardcore and they're brutal and if you mess up you will pay the price but you know there's an element of like learning your enemy learning the factions i know you've talked i know from the gameplay we've only kind of seen the one faction but you guys have talked a little bit about like the enemies will scale up some of them will have better equipment they might be harder to fight you might need to learn how they react to situations and kind of stuff like that that's so a few things there um you're not going to be able to learn too much from pvp encounters through any videos because there's not going to be any death cameras i don't believe um, death cams? No, yeah. Yeah. So that'll be pretty freaking fun. Learning yeah. from the AI. And you might be to a situation where, say, right now what I'm thinking about is dealing with the better factions of AI. Or uh, tiers. Tiers, if you will. They might throw nades more often. Well... Right-handed people throw nades with their right hand, uh, right arm, most of the time. You might be able to get a shot on their arm to where they can't throw a nade. Something, something it, like maybe. that. Yeah, and you might be able to time it to where you could drop it right near their teammates or something. Um, teammates, uh, AI teammates, or the other AI near him, however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, or hell, shoot it out of his hand. That'd be yeah. a cool feature. I yeah. want to see that in games like this, where or like, the, the the grenades are modeled. Some like a War Thunder feature, where if you're carrying too much stuff on you, like your grenade could get smacked by a round on your it, vest. That would be cool. 
Yeah, Why if it's realistic, explode, though. Yeah, will it will, will it explode? It I I think it would. You know, yeah, is there it's, any there's gunpowder. There's, yeah, I it's gunpowder it's... inside of a shrapnel grenade. If you put a five five six through that thin piece of metal on the outside no, of it, it's TNT, right? Or well, T yeah, but no, the, so, the sorry, round is C four. Well, yeah, but it's you need so, a, you need uh, a you need a uh, if you shoot a normal grenade, will it explode? Like an M sixty seven. Yeah. Well, because uh, I remember correctly, well, you need a specific. It, you, it uses a fuse. It, it isn't. It does. Well, that fuse is just sending a spark down to the grenade. That's all a fuse yeah, is. So. so a spark caused by a hot round striking metal should swipe that grenade off. Because I'm pretty isn't sure. Is Russian though? All right, we're gonna we're we're gonna settle this. Yeah, Give me two minutes to Google. Uh, Russian <laughs> grenades. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's funny. All right, so the I, RP, but... the F one or the RP, RG, probably the RGD five. Uh, so yeah, that's the probably one. So we're gonna see. Because okay, the so... M sixty seven, I think that's just like TNT, and then you have a uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, it uses a delay fuse. Okay, so if it will only be ignited by high caliber rifle rounds using tracers. The M67 is designed with a com a, a compository explosive system, so it yeah. doesn't work off basic black powder. It works off of a TNT black powder black yeah. powder mix. Yeah. That it would works be as off. a cool suggestion so, then to add. Yeah, I might put that in suggestions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like go, we're go ahead high, throw that in there. Yeah. I'll do it in a bit. Um, I want to get to the rest of this point because I'm not. I want to see different levels of training for the AI because they've talked about the morale system in the past. I, I, I don't know if they're going to cover it later on in this video um, about how if they're losing or their AI behavior is going to change on if you're winning, if you're losing the fight, if you're wounded, if they're wounded, like the AI is going to react how realistic for, yeah, with the retreat. different factions, yeah. maybe more of an aggressive or tactical play style from them. So you have like a, an aggressive raider bandit clan. I'm going to call it a gang because I don't, I don't really know what the terminology would be correctly, but they're more of an aggressive and ruthless type of enemy versus if you have somebody like we've always talked, we've talked about the undergrounds in the past podcasts, they're more tactical in their, in their survival. So maybe they're going to camp. They're going to hold corners. They're going to tactically be positioned better versus your standard bandits. You're going to run into out in the field. They're not trained. They don't really know how to use a rifle per se. They he talked about a randomization with hit chance is kind of what I'm getting yeah. from him, and how the AI is scripted to where they they go off your last known movements and where <laughs> your gunfire is coming from, and, and it goes off skills that the yes. actual AI has as well. So maybe the higher skilled enemies are going to react differently yeah. to how you play if they're. If they're taking sniper rounds near them, they're not going to push out. They're not going to try to get. They're going to know that hey, that's a sniper. He can. He knows where I am. I don't know where he is. I'm going to stay in cover. That's something a system I would love to see where the AI behave differently based on what faction they are. Yeah. That and that the that's something we know that are the normal bandits. The ones, and then yeah. we had the pirates, and then we have the military. That's the things. That's the ones we know. I think. And there's probably more besides that, either whether it's going to be in EA or later on, because I, I doubt yeah. Ground Zero is going to be available from the beginning. I really do. No, no, no. It's, uh, it it uh, won't be available. It's, he says it, it in the be. interview yeah. here. We'll get okay. to that portion yeah. in a second. Uh, if anybody has anything, doesn't have anything to add, I'll go ahead and start again. We uh, we have one hour left. Through like the from the designer point of view, you just don't want to the, the players are like the blaming the game, you know, or designer for it. Yeah. They should blame themselves, you know, so they are learning. I think the games are also uh, like a lot about the learning. You know, you understand the rules, you learn it, yeah. then you enjoy it, you know, then you get the new challenges, you learn it, you know, and you just continue with it. So this is like the this is how it should be, you know, and. Um, you know, our game is it's it's same like the, from the Call of Duty when you are playing the this kind of the PvP is very hard to like to learn something, you know, because yeah. you always dive from somebody, you know. And uh but our game is also like the very slow, you know, it's like the very tactical. So I think it's like the if you make the mistake, you make the mistakes. You didn't see him like the first time, you know, you didn't yeah. expect him, you know, or you just jump over the wall and he was there, you know, he killed you. Yeah. So do it, you know. So yeah. There is definitely not like the, you know, I was talking about the Dark Souls, mostly about the player experience, like the, you know, yeah. you that he's like the really good, you know, he's enjoying and then the Dark Souls slap you and you die, you know. <laughs> so it's same like the in the Tarkov, I hate like the when I die or died, you know, I'm not playing the Tarkov anymore, but uh, when I died because the greed. 
you know this oh, was yes. the most painful like the stuff you know because yes. like, uh, i was always saying like hey don't go there don't go there and i should have just like, i should have <laughs> left i should have left <laughs> exactly yeah you know so well so that's sure. it's kind of interesting so one of the, one of the things that in, in my short time playing um gray zone the most significant thing to me was the the experience of dying um it's completely different for one major reason right in tarkov mm -hmm. especially if you're playing with a group in tarkov you die and that's like the equivalent of you you have been disqualified from the game go sit in timeout <laughs> and watch your friends have fun while you do nothing yeah. right so it's it's like a deflation when you die mm -hmm. in gray yeah. zone because it's a server instance you know similar to like the daisy kind of thing you're back at the fob and you die and it's almost an elevation like now you have like the adrenaline of like Shh, i gotta get back there i gotta get back there you know what i mean so yeah. how much of that there i've seen people who have said oh they need to they need to remove that from the game now i personally disagree but i would love to know what your philosophy is on on being able to basically get back to where you died in whatever yeah. way and, and interact with that I think it's like the massive multiplayer online. It's like the, the past one, you know, when you die and you reboot on the on the graveyard, graveyard and going back to the like the, your body, you know. So, so I think it's better. We we also make some changes in the coma because in the past, like the, or past, like the, it's two weeks, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, you know a lot of stuff is changing a lot. Uh, when the lungs and the livers were destroyed, you die. We change it that you enter the coma, you know, so there is like the bigger oh. chance to be in the coma and the other guys can take you like the up, you know, so it will be more like the more cooperative or like the, you will don't die like the extremely like a lot, you know, because this is what we wanted to not like in the Tarkov, you know, just go away, you know, you just die. Yeah. But we want to have this kind of the medic stuff. I really love the videos in the past in the streaming when in the squads, you know, when the people were dying and they grab them, you know, and, and like the move them like the behind yeah. the corner and work on them, you know, it was like the, like the, in the real life, you know, so so this is what we want to have this kind of the experience. You deciding like the, if you continue in the fight, if you first like the eliminate threat, you know, or you just like the, take care about your friend, you know, and you are risking that you will die. So this is what we want. And I, I also don't agree that we should like to throw people up, you know, it's just because people think about the extractions too much. This is not extraction, you know, this is not Tarkov. This is more like the multiplayer online game, yeah. or the multiplayer game where you are just living and playing the session and you are just there, you know, it's it's different concept. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I am excited for that. You know, I haven't, I haven't played it yet, but that, you know, when Veritas was talking about that, that complete, you know, switch up of dying isn't the end of your experience. You know, it's not just immediately over, but the ability to react to it. Because I, I think I understand some of the criticism of people who, who don't want basically a, a battle that never ends. Where like if there's 4v4 in a PvP fight and they kill me and while the fight's still going on, I come back and I kill a guy and he comes back and it's like, and it's forever. And I understand that. But I think that there's a lot of interesting experiences and because of how big the map is, you know, getting back to any particular fight, depending on where it is, might actually take a while. And it kind of opens up the ability to almost like react to the, the world and the map a little bit. Maybe you try and cut them off on their way back to the fob with all the loot or something like that. Maybe you don't just keep, you know, running your head through the wall, going back to that one fight. Maybe you switch it up and go to a different area, or maybe you messed up and you alerted too many AI and the whole battle is just lost and you abandoned mm -hmm. it. Like, I just like the, the thought of having those options of being able to continue your play session however you want. Maybe you don't want to go back because you didn't really have any loot on you and it doesn't matter, but just th the feeling that it's not always just a deflated balloon where every time you die, you're just like, okay, I'm done. I have to go completely restart. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to provide some cool experience. At least I hope I'm excited for that to create some unique experiences. And I haven't I even... It... Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I read like the, the some kind of the comment that people will like the re respawn and move back and the fight will be never ending. I don't think it's like the true uh, because you respawn. Even if you are like the running naked, you have to call the heli and you probably don't fight in the first city. You know, you fight somewhere else. Yeah. Well. So it will take several minutes, you know, to heli arrive and the uh, and the fly with the heli, and then you have to run somewhere, and the fight is like the probably somewhere where you have to go around the AI, you know. So it's yeah. not like the easy to just like the respawn, like in the battlefield, for example, you know. So yeah, for yeah, sure. you're you're basically fighting, you know, you have to get re-geared up, right, and fight your way back potentially to uh to your you know your your friends. It's it's just a completely different experience you, because you're playing the game the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like the the epitome of of the opposite of all the things that I that frustrate me about Tarkov is I feel like so many of the aspects of the design intentional and unintentional don't respect your time you spend so much yeah. time in menus and not actually playing the game whereas this is like almost the entirety of it you're spent playing the game and what you just described too about the whole down state every in this game in Tarkov anytime I always hear about like the down state 
I always kind of roll my eyes until just five minutes ago where I realized like that's a it's another experience where you're still actively there, especially now yeah. you could do the whole like Daisy thing where it's like black screen, you're unconscious. <laughs> now th that could work, although I kind of would love if like you open your eyes and it's blurry and you hear muffled noises and then it closes, you know, like you're still experiencing kind of like partially what's going on. Um, but then also, you know, that gives the people you're playing with the opportunity to say like, do we go? The, the risk reward there is like, it's going to take him six minutes to get geared up and get back here. Do we want to risk dying to save six minutes? Maybe, potentially, right? You might yeah. be like, please save me. I've got something, please. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> that's such an interesting push yeah, and pull. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, it's oh, like, the, you know, the, that was one thing. It's like the big player accountability. It's like the, uh, no, like accountability Post. agency. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, they can decide it like the, what that's they cool. want. There is no, like, the rules. Yeah. Or, like, the very limited rules. And... I never heard you. <laughs> both they both said it. Gertrude were saying pause. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, mother. that's uh, uh, what he said there about going out, like the respawn time. Like you could say it's a respawn when you get back into the fight again. It's yeah. gonna be several minutes. It's I don't I don't think people on or certain streamers and people that played it don't understand how long it's gonna take. Yeah, you you're gonna have to gear benefit, back up, benefit. dude. It's you you're gonna be like yeah, 10, 12 back. minutes out of the fight. Yeah, and also and it, the benefit of this system is there's going to be a downstate. Yeah. Yes. No, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't like. Uh, I I I understand it. I don't like it uh, on the lungs uh, part. Liver, I can understand. Yeah, but the lungs, uh, I understand why the liver was all, also because it's major blood vessel. But yeah, I would like to the lungs to be kill shots still. So I'm guessing only head, neck. And heart is kill shots nowadays? That doesn't make sense, though, because you hit somebody in their lung, their blood's going to start flowing into their lungs, they're going to drown yes. their own blood. Yes. That's yeah. realistic. Maybe they could but, add a different uh, system the... where... Uh, what's another good liver that would be considered in a down state? Oh, I'd say both your legs get broken, and maybe an arm gets taken out. You're going to be uh, pretty you... useless. Yeah, but you can still mm -hmm. walk or crawl. Cool. So the down state, I think regardless of the down state, depending upon a broken leg or whatever, uh, with how they were saying where like your eyes come in and out and whatnot. So first off, two minutes is fucking pretty damn short. I think it should be at minimal three fight, minutes. And in a gunfight, two minutes is long. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I feel... I feel they're going to be ending up changing that in my eyes. I, I think the long, I, I do like the downstate with the lung because just because you can hit in your lung doesn't mean you're out, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can Deliver still get dead. picked up. Uh, you can still get picked up. Same with the liver. If you get medical on that person quick enough, they, they'll survive. It's a, it's a very, very short window because blood flows quick when it's got an open hole. Um, yeah, especially liver. <laughs> let's say if your guy gets shot next to you, you got four, you got thirty to forty five seconds to pick him up, get a fucking bandage on him, and compress that hole as much as you can, and have your third guy covered. Yes, you. and then that get depends. him to a stable area, maybe inject some morphine or some epinephrine in him, and get his heart rate back to a normal uh, pace where it's not he's not going to lose it, his heart's not going to give out, and then you focus on medevac. That would be a system yeah. I like to so see because it's realistic. But that's if he goes into coma immediately. He might, they might have like, you have drastic blood loss for like five to 10 seconds. You have five to 10 seconds to get somewhere and then go into coma because you don't really go into coma immediately. You go to in coma because of blood loss. I hope blood loss something and, like that. Blood loss so, and heart dropping usually. An another yeah, thing is though. That, that would be cool. So like, oh no, I'm. I'm gonna go into a coma. I need. I'm gonna run behind, like as far as as far as possible away from the combat, and then you get down, like you sit, you lie behind a tree or in a bush or something, and your friend can then safely ish get you up or get you fixed at least. Uh, I would love to see maybe yeah. a body dragging system too. If your guy goes yeah. down, he's in a really bad yeah. position. Quick apply, maybe a tourniquet or some kind of chest seal and get him pulled back out of the line of fire because that five to 10 second window is not a very long window. And I he may, he, he may, he may think he has 10 seconds. In reality, he has three. He drops out in the middle of the street in your firefight. 
now he's in a bad spot. He's either going to bleed out and you're going to be down a man for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how far away you are from the base. And now you're down a man. But yeah, I, I would be, love to see a body mm-hmm. dragging system because it can make it a lot mm-hmm. different to just simply grab his leg with an arm and hold your pistol up with the other arm and just pull yeah. him out. Another and it should be two, two, three different systems. It shouldn't be the same thing, I think. Yes. You should, um, you should have the thing you grab with the hand, the one with the hook and the rope that you have, like uh, the carabiner and the... You, yes. you can also uh, hook, and, hook and roll, too, if you drop your backpack yeah. to pick him up. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that one. I think, um, like, lifting pull uh, two kinds of pulls that would be new would be really cool if they implement. Oh, your, your backpack's full enough. You can set them in between your shoulders and your backpack, and he'll sit right on top of you. That's what they teach you in the army. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that too. Another great thing to add... Now that I could finally get a word in. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, All right, everybody keep talking. So, anyway, it's my turn. <laughs> there's there's a such thing called bleed stops. So I know this coma state is basically going to act as a timer, and you're still bleeding. But what if you throw in a bleed stop right before you go into the knocked out state? Well, there there's an injector. Um, that's an actual thing. Exactly. It's, in, it's in Tarkov. It literally rushes white blood cells to the affected area and that instantly too. starts making white blood cells uh, so start to form scabs. You you bleed stop, and then what happens if you get your IV in? Uh, uh, not IV, fucking blood uh, set. I'm still uh, stuck blood, on yeah. fucking <laughs> getting my IV yesterday. I fucking, guess. I was thinking about that shit. Um, if you're fast enough, that yeah. could like rest yourself basically but yeah, let's say if you let's say if you have 10 seconds it takes five seconds because we have seen the blood thing and it takes it, it's a yeah it has a long what's called a long a, a animation yeah animation time. i would prob i would probably see you put the blood in first to give you more time and then you put blood stop in you uh yeah if you have yeah. Well, let's the blood say stop is just a, a blood, a blood stop. I mean, it is just this, so. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a completely, like, you can buy these for 25 pounds. But how fast, uh, f- yeah, like, I, in, in really, like, how fast are, are they? 30 seconds. Yeah, and within 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll being blood clotting agent, these are uh, faster from a robust uh, yeah. clot in 30 seconds. Yeah, it's way oh, faster okay. if you apply it directly to the area. I've seen them work yeah. in like actually, 10. These aren't the inject. This is an applicator where you actually just shove it straight into the wound. And yeah. Then yeah, I see that. Pump it in. Okay. But, uh, there are also the ones that are in the bags. Like, yeah. Zagustin. That's it. Uh, Zagustin is what it is called in Tarkov. I can't remember the military uh, name of it. I've only seen him used two or three times. They're usually only carried by medics because they're very expensive injectors. I think they're worth like close to 600 bucks. They're not cheap, but they are life-saving materials. They've completely changed okay. how medics deal with combat wounds. Yeah, ha- anti hemorrhagic is what it is. Yes. Called. Okay. Yeah, but like, I, I don't know. So, yeah, like I said, you will probably have to... Put in blood first, unless they add that you can't operate on yourself. Because if you have operate on your lung, you need to have a friend do it. Maybe. Could maybe be. the bleed stop would work, but the bleed stop wouldn't be a permanent effect. Yeah, and you exactly. maybe have to have you your would... friend come apply a surgery <clears throat> kit to you or something to yeah, patch yeah. up the area where you were hit. That would be uh, a system or, I would love to see implemented. Or you would have to chain blood, basically. Like if you have three blood bags. You're like, oh, I'm just going to chain blood and rush to the uh, LC or something, if you're playing yeah. solo. Uh, please, yeah. ignore, yeah. please ignore the website, um, but here's uh, uh, Carbotonic, uh, Carbotosis. That's the same. That's the same one. It, yeah, same one you linked oh, before. Why the fuck is, uh, sorry, my, <laughs> currently my, le- my right monitor is just flashing at me, so anyway, IndiaMart.com. <laughs> IndiaMart. Yeah, Carbotex. Yeah. yeah. Carbotex makes them. So, how much is that? 500 uh, something. It's Indian, so. Uh, for per box. 60, that's, six, that's 60 bucks. No, wait. That's six bucks. Yeah. Six, seven bucks. 
Yeah, but the stuff they use in the military is more high grade than that because that's yeah, meant yeah. for. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's and meant it's for military pregnancy spending. Birth. Yeah. It's military spending, so it's gonna be hyping up the price as well. Because that. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I tell you right now, that. military military equipment is cheaper than if you were to buy it on the civilian market. I know my P320 when I was in cost 200 bucks. The U.S. Army, I paid almost 600 for mine in the in an M17, which is the same exact gun with a different classification. I know some guys have had to uh, do the same thing, but like uh, the civ civilian market is cheaper, but the military one is more expensive, and it's exact same thing. It just has different names. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's back to the video. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, it should create uh, a lot of. Uh possibilities, you know, a lot of decision makings, you know, a lot of uh, experience different, you know, so it's like the, you can decide it like the hey, I'm going to the stock or like the, they already win the fight. So I'm going back to the like the body and take everything or everybody die because the, they are waiting for the, for you or whatever, you know, so yeah, or they can like the, throw the stuff away, you know, we were thinking about the um, like the, the insurance, but then we drop it. Uh, so you know, they can good even choice, take the stuff choice. from your body and return back and you will just wait them in the in the base, you know? So, yeah. You know. So now all, all that being said, I'd love to hear the, the core. So games like this, these kind of like hardcore tactical shooter games, it all hinges on death actually feeling meaningful, right? Because if mm -hmm. we have unlimited stuff back yeah, in our stash and, un, you know, just it, then it, it doesn't matter. Cause That's the first one. Throw bags is going to be huge then. Like you're going to throw your backpack down. Yes. I, it's like Tarkov as well. I it's honestly, be... I hope it's the same as Tarkov. Speed, Tarkov, everything that. Yeah, it, yeah Tarkov we, has a really good system for their for bags and weight and everything else. They they yeah. do that really well. We can't yeah. we can't have it too realistic where the, it's an animation to take the backpack off the full animation something like that. You know, no, it no, needs no, to be quick. Uh, you gotta like unbuckle yeah. it and slip yeah, it down yeah, your yeah, shoulder, yeah. pick your but rifle don't up. The military <laughs> bag, backpacks have quick a uh, quick disconnect. It's it takes longer to put them on. If you have, I had like, Velcro just... attachments on the back of my vest. My backpack was Velcro. I could yeah, literally okay. grab the top handle and rip it off my back. Yeah, yeah. And this wasn't this wasn't back pouches that went on the back of a, an AVS. No, this was a full on like what you would see like a 511 uh 70 i think is what it's called that was medium size back the plate carrier right? yes they they literally yeah. make ones that stick on to the back of plate carriers velcro which is the perfect uh, thing ever because if you need to grab medical supplies you can literally grab the top handle of that bag rip it off your point. back throw it on the ground and zip it open in under three seconds yeah i would like something there or I don't know which country has it, but it's like uh, you know what uh, race uh, race seats. You you know you you turn the thing on the chest basically, right? And it and just it drops like it. yeah. But this is the, like uh, you you hit like you you hit yourself on the uh, on the on the chest. It's like uh, you need some amount of force to make it release. Uh, I would like I something like that. like that. Yeah, it takes longer to put on because you have to reattach it, but usually when you put the bag on it would be like the fight's over right uh so yeah, it's a yeah I, I, I i yeah that would be as soon as the fight starts everyone runs to a tree tries to memorize it or mark it on the map and then <laughs> just like drop the bag and hope they're back in one hour imagine uh, spray paint cans you could just take a fucking bush and spray a yellow marker on it and just run away <laughs> Yeah, because the the gear is only going to be on the ground for one hour. That's the thing as well, right? Because they've said that before. Like, the gear is only... The PvP, like, player gear is only on the ground for one hour, and AI is, like, 20 minutes, I think it said. Uh, so that's going to be pretty interesting as well, then. That's going to suck if you die right at the end of a fight, and it's going to take you 20 minutes to redeploy after... Re uh, if you're just grabbing a backpack or a vest and maybe a quick, yeah. like an mp5 build that you already have in your i'm gonna call it a stash i don't know what they're using it uh as but you gotta just grab a quick i don't know plate carrier a fast helmet and an mp5 and then take a bird over it takes 15 minutes that means you're gonna have less than five minutes to go get the gear that the ai's dropped and you were in a very high tier military base where there's a bunch of high tier loot that's worth grabbing 
Yeah. I, I don't like that system considering how long, uh, from what Mara says, how long the extracts are going to, or not extracts, but the helos are going to take to go to places. I think they should bump that maybe another 10, 20 minutes up. But I, I do mean, like the fact cool. stuff these spawns. Because yeah. it's going to, going to be easier on my computer and the server. <laughs> yes. That Imagine if everything was there permanently. That would just... Yeah. No. Like, yeah. You have an AI and you have like 48 players running around killing AI and let's say they kill two AIs every four minutes or uh, every six minutes or so an hour that's like, you know, that's going to be over 20 minutes. It's going to be like 300 AI stuff on the ground. It's going to chug the server. Oh, yeah, if definitely. they add more, like every minute they add to that, it's just gonna chug it even more. And that's like two AI every like six minutes. That's quite a quite small number, I think. Um, but yeah, back to the video. All right, because it's like, okay, whatever, I'll just go back or whatever. So, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, I, I, I don't want to ask questions that you can't answer, but on like death what it's supposed to feel like and by and kind of connected to that what like loot and looting is supposed to feel like because obviously there's two ends of the spectrum if i have absolutely nothing and every time i find one gun i die the game is so hard and i never have anything that i don't want to play and on the other end of the spectrum if i have a stash full of 500 guns and armors and unlimited ammo then when i die it doesn't feel hard it doesn't matter and there's no so, reason to go back and there's no reason to go back so like where do, what's your kind of vision for like where gray zone falls on that spectrum of you know, I need to be able to, I need to want to go out into this world so that I can actually find loot and get stuff. So loot can't be too easy to acquire, but it can't be too difficult. Like, how does, how do you feel, what do you want that to be looting and, and the, the price of, of dying mm -hmm. with something maybe that's really good that you've just got? I think the, uh, you know, we are trying to balance the game somehow, but I'm 100% sure that it will be unbalanced, you know, in this way, in the first early access. We just don't have the data. We need to wait yeah. for the players to play and yeah. see what they can achieve. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we don't have the weapon boxes, you know. We don't have like the, another like the containers, so like the, in the stash. So the stash is still limited. We have only the... I the like wallet that. we have the okay ring and med kit you know so you can put the yeah. stuff and, and it's like the smaller so it's like the limited you can all have bambillions of the of the of the guns in the stash the thing is that it's also about the time you know if you die you have to call the heli you know you have to run by the heli or fly by the heli you know you have to go yeah. to the, like to finish the quest so it's not only about um, uh losing the stuff but it's also losing the time you know which you already invest so it's like the, another thing this is what you don't have in the tarkov right it's like the you just pick up and, and press the button and you are back in the game so yep. maybe it will take a little bit longer <laughs> to get like the back exactly you know to finish the quest uh and of course it's about the ego you know so if somebody wants to like the play the game like the running with the hatchet you know and then do some stuff and just dying and dying it's like the okay whatever it's like the, your choice you know it's like the whatever if somebody wants to play it as we are expecting that's great you know we will be happy but uh there is no you know i'm not like the i'm different a lot i think i'm different person than nikita you know i am not punishing the people i am not like the if people are like the good i am not immediately rising the secure container to the next 20 levels you know so it's like the it's, it's not like that you know we're creating the experience we are not creating the frustration and so real quick on that just to touch um there in the future, obviously, there's going to be presets. Look how long it took Tarkov to make presets and to figure out, oh, hey, that'd yeah. probably be a good idea. But um, I forgot to mention that earlier for um, gearing back up and stuff, because yeah. nobody wants to play Tetris again, especially if we're coming from Tarkov. We do not like tactical te Tetris anymore. Okay, we don't I'm want that so for great on Warfare. 17,000 bags. Yes. yes, I have bags inside have of bags inside 20 of bags. day packs. I have 20 day packs stacked in my inventory. <laughs> but, but they're creating the experience, not the frustration, is yeah. what he said. And that's that's a I'm just gonna say a bold statement. Okay. I just, just love saying. the I am not Nikita <laughs> yeah. <laughs> statement. Yeah. That, such a ballsy statement. I love Mara for that. That's so <laughs> It shows me his confidence in this. If, confidence is a huge deal, in my opinion, when it, it comes to creating a game. It 100% is. But the community, whoever is watching this right now, Mara, we will hold you to that and what you just said. Yep. Do not become Nikita and go to these streamers like Jesse and Veritas and what do you want to see in the game? You know, and basically build it around them. This is your game, Mara. Listen to the full community. 
people have said this nonstop. Basically, this podcast is what's getting us our suggestions. Okay. We have uh, 49,000 opinions that can participate in polls in this Discord server. There's 49,000 opinions. Make more polls. That's a very, very small percentage. Only five of them matter. Yes. Or just Zap hasn't spoken this entire time and just told just now. <laughs> Zap will agree with what I say. Message yes. me, message me, and get with me for a fucking podcast. I, because guess I what? I promise you. <laughs> when this game releases, I'll be doing the regular podcast with everybody. Oh, hey, how's the yeah. game going? Yada yada, blah blah blah. And then there's the new face podcast where what's up with you? You know, what what do you want to talk about? Whatever that person wants to talk about, you know. Uh, about it's, the stash he talked about, by the way, I like that, but I would love to see a weapon rack that you can only place weapons in. So, for example, you have a okay, weapon rack with tw- with uh, twenty uh, with twenty weapon slots. You can mod your weapons, put them in the weapon slots, so you have you uh, so you have everything else like you know uh, helmets, radios in the stash, but on this like you mm. have a side stash just for weapons that are pre-assembled, all that, so they're ready and done. And I would li- like to uh, see a preset of uh, what's it called um, grab loadout and get the fuck out. Like, uh, like you just press a button and you have like a pre-loadout, a loadout that's pre-done already. That just yeah. like you know. Like, you just you press a button, and you equip everything, and then you can just run out, if you have to do that. Like, I would see one of, like, a go bag, or whatever you would call it, like, a go loadout, we, we, or whatever. We, we, call it, we call it a kit bag in the Rangers. Yeah. We all have kit bags. It has our helmets, our plate carriers, our backpacks, all our medical equipment, um, all yeah. of our... Usually, all of our mags are loaded up, unless... Where you know, know that we're not going to be needed to be combat ready for a while. It's it's literally called a kit bag, and I structure yeah. my Tarkov loadout like I'm running a kit bag. I literally have okay. large backpacks with an ABS inside of there. My ABS is already packed with mags. My meds are already put in my backpack the way I can completely drag, 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 put it all in my pockets. Yeah. And that's that's a system a I would bag. love to see being able to yeah. organize mm-hmm. one um, kit bag. One. Yeah, or like you can have like five kit bags sitting in sitting in your stash, and they're just. I they're they're literally just like okay you have for example I don't know forty five slots and that's what you have to work with in a kit bag allows you to put your helmet your AVS preload your AVS ah, with yeah, everything okay, you need yeah. and then and you then can you have ha- this preloaded kit bag rack. and you can name it rack, yeah yeah and of course yeah if you wanted to run like an MK eighteen or a Scar H yeah. or you know an SR twenty five you could have that. You could have three or four of those of your favorite weapons two or three times on your weapon rack and be like, okay, this MK18 build is my favorite build. Maybe I want to put yeah. a different sight on it. I have that sitting in my kit bag, for example. And if I don't want to bring it with me, just drop it in the stash. Yeah. That's a system that yeah. works really well. Oh, I know cool, is. Actually. Uh, I don't care about none of that weapon pull shit stuff y'all was talking about. All I want is a fucking camp like in Fallout 76 where I could deploy wherever the fuck I'm at and I have that as my hooch and I could build whatever the fuck I want. That's what I want. <laughs> All right. You're wrong. Anyway, leave I to leave your you. own based fucking on, podcast. Based on what you said, uh, Sid. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking, changing stuff in uh, the field. How is that going to work with how the weapon building works? How do you uh, mean? Because uh, we know that we can move the sites further forward, further back. Maybe they Will you could have to do that in game. Maybe I, I would mm. love to see a system to where it it you allow to like a weapon modding mat. Let's just let, let's use this for an example. It literally looks like a keyboard mat. You set your gun down on top uh, on the mat when you're out in the yeah. field and go, okay, I set this site two or three slots too, too far forward on my picket tinning. I want to move it back. Or this grip is not really working for me. I want to put it towards more towards the front of my barrel so I have a better recoil. That's something I want to see in games do not get right. Where your grip sits is very important on yes. your gun. If you yeah. have it way up towards the front, you're going to be able to control it a lot better, but your arm is going to be strained when you're holding it. It is a big thing because I run my I run my grips as far as my arm can take it. You won't as you won't have as much stamina. Yes, yeah, your aiming yeah, stamina yeah, yeah, exactly. from Tarkov would be lower. So I really like that. You should probably have that as a suggestion also. 
definitely jot that down because I'm writing that down yeah. for a talk. That is a very <laughs> good idea for that type well, of system. Yeah, so Kudos. how I grew up <laughs> and learned about weapon modding is you never, like, you can touch everything on the gun except the fucking sights cause, uh, or, or scopes. Like, I in real life, yes. I know the <laughs> quick disconnects and stuff, but like, my dad and all the guys, like, nah, I don't touch the fucking scope. You zeroed it. You have zeroed it. You don't touch it. You don't adjust on the fly. That's just Hollywood. But with bullshit. that, maybe, like, for example, is it a G33 magnifier? I can't remember. It's the sight that flips onto the back of a, a an XPS3. Um, that magnifier, maybe you could field modify that magnifier because that doesn't play into yeah, your zero wing. Yeah, 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 exactly. But and let's say it, I want to take that itself. off because it helps my ergonomics a little bit better if I don't have that on, or maybe I can see a little bit more because there's yeah. not a big magnifier blocking my eye when I'm aiming. And close range quarters, that's not going to matter. I don't need a four time zoom when I'm looking maybe 15 meters down a hallway. So just being able to quickly go, okay, I'm going to take this off and. Yeah, or being able yeah. to, for example, if you wanted to take your scope off of your SR-25 and just run your side-mounted scope, the canted one, in close range, because, again, that scope takes up a lot of your visual. When you're aiming down that canted sight, you can't see shit on your left side. Yeah, but, yeah, but how do you do when you attach it again? Do you have to re-zero it then, like, in the field? That's, that, uh, that's Typically, the yes. About. Typically, yes. That's why it's not really a thing. Um, but it would be a cool gameplay feature because zero, I do not want to ever have to fucking, z I hate zeroing my guns. Mm -hmm. It takes over 500 rounds to get it point accurate. Like you have to put yeah, a lot of rounds yeah. through your weapon. It's very annoying. I think you can zero the gun here. It would yeah. be nice to see zeroing, but I, I would hate. I think clean does it. I don't, I don't think I'd like to see um, a zero. That's going factor. a little too far in realism. Well, I just, I yeah. just want base, uh, Base, base um, reality. Arma, base <laughs> arma. You press page up, you press page down, and yeah. it goes up by 25 meters or something I, like that. I'm talking about like you throw a scope on and then you have to re zero it to make sure it works correctly and that it's okay, not off to I'm, the left I'm, or to the right. I, don't, so, I do not want that. No, 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 no. Games, no, games get sure. zeroing wrong. That is not zeroing, that is ranging. When you are setting a distance off of your scope to where it's going to hit, that is referred to as ranging. I'm talking about okay. zeroing to the point that you know your scope is centered directly down the line of your barrel okay, and its okay. point and your magnification. So there is a difference between ranging and zeroing. You can range in the middle of the field, but don't expect to fucking hit shit because your scope's not zero to the range you set it to. Yeah. Um, that sucks so because you, a lot of... So you yeah, usually we like zero it at like or range and zero. Two hundred and fifty like, meters is yeah, is about yeah. where you want with typically your four to six times scopes. It is two hundred fifty yeah. meters to five hundred meters. I'd say on a six times anything past that, I don't know why the fuck you're trying to shoot that far. Get the fuck closer. <laughs> <laughs> you got we legs. Have, use them private for fuck's sake. <laughs> we have three hundred meters, uh, but just because we have a hunting uh, place that have. Uh, uh, in the middle yeah, of a field. Yeah, 300 meters is six. Per perfectly acceptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we know it's like 300 meters. We know it. You, we will hit that that range. And if it's f further, we just hold a little bit over. And if it's closer, we just hold a little bit under. Like, that's just how we do it. You want to talk about a fire suggestion I just thought of? Oh, God. Double, Three of them in one double video. I double eye opening when looking yes. through a sniper scope to look at your yes. fucking range finder and yeah. find a distance of your shit so you don't have to guess if your range finder is looking in the right spot or they Thank add you. a little HUD Thank option. Literally you. just Thank open your left eye and go, okay, I'm 457 meters from my target. I should probably should aim for the fourth and a half tick on my uh, scope. I think Rilo talked about this in his video with when he's aiming or clean or whoever it is, he's aiming down the sides, right? Everything around the scope gets blurry and it's like, no, it shouldn't be that. It should be clear because you have two eyes. Like you should be able to aim down the side and still have a yeah. clear picture on the side. That's um, realistic, you know? Yeah, yeah, but the right side should be blurry because the right uh, you can't really focus on the sides and the outside of the sides with the right eye. But if you're a uh, right-hand shooter... Just make uh, it a fucking keybind. That's all you gotta do. Please, Mara, if you're gonna watch this video, I'm gonna put it in the suggestions so you don't have to listen to everything I'm saying. Just make it a keybind. 
Don't Let worry me change about it. it. Mara already told me he watches my videos, and we're doing or, an interview. Good, so. good. Awesome. Or free look, uh, the free look when you're aiming down the sights, everything it's else is blurry around you. I think, yeah, I think Clean or someone did that as well. They free looked when aiming down the sights and everything was blurry. It was like, dude, I hope this is a bug, he said, and I really do hope that's a bug because if you free look, it shouldn't, because they're doing picture in picture, I think it is. So I, I think that's the problem. Uh, I hope they fix that somehow because I want to be able to aim at a person and then you free look on the ref left and right side and see like more macro uh placement like yeah instead of just aiming my sights around i hope that happens yeah because skype uh, sight scanning gets really annoying and i have a bad tendency coming from like a call of duty type because that's most of where my shooter experience come from i'm not versed in like arma or squad or even tarkov in a way i've only got like 100 hours now um is the fact that if you don't have the right ergo build your rescoping time is going to mess up your ability to be effective in a yeah. fight so being able to free look while you're aimed in is very good to go okay i have a four times i can't see shit to my left or right because you're not you, you, you try to open eye and aim a four times your eyes are gonna fucking hurt <laughs> That's it's too much magnification on your eye. Yeah. Um, so now when you're just looking down the scope and your eye, your left eye's closed, I'm, I'm right handed. So I shoot, I shoot with my right eye. Um, it's different. Now I have a hollow sight and reflex. You can open eye all day long. No problem. I've never looked down a hollow sight with one eye closed. Always. Oh, whoa, whoa. oh so you can't have longer, uh, I mean, bigger, bigger zooms with uh, both eye open. You can, but it wouldn't yeah, be effective. Yeah. It would be blurry. You couldn't make out targets as easy. Oh. Let's say you're a sniper for your team and you've got three other guys running around on the ground and you're providing overwatch and you're trying to keep an eye out and scan the distance. Now you've got to close that eye and take a look and see. I would love to see an armband system. That's, just colors. Okay. Okay. Then I'm just weird because I, I do that when I hunt. My dad yeah. teached me very young. You shoot always with open uh, both eyes open. So that's mm -hmm. how I learned. Um, yeah. So it's it works sometimes, but when it comes to sitting in a position for a very, very long amount of time, it's not a very effective strategy. Uh, and it's just going to cause too much strain on your eye. You're going to develop eye problems. You're going to develop uh, sight loss in your eye. It, it's just going to happen. It sucks. Mm -hmm. I, I've, had, I've heard snipers talk okay. about this before. Uh, scanning and trying to look when you're when you're trying to look down a scope with both eyes open, it, it just sucks. Uh, okay. Now, you're probably not running a magnification up to like 50 or 20, 25 to 50 times zoom, though. Uh, no, Some of the I'm sniper running, rifles that we have uh, go all the way up to 50 times on like uh, the M700. 24, I think it is. 6 to 24. Yeah, so you're, you're only running a 6 times zoom, so you're fine because you're, you're, you're only running a 6 times. That's fine. You can run that pretty well. Um, I usually ACOG run 12, you can. Yeah. 12, 15. But... I say that we should get off this gun rant. Yeah, yeah, I want to put yeah. these things down. Let's get back to this video. We still have like 50 minutes to get through. <laughs> this was my fear because it's already six. I have 40 minutes left. <laughs> oh, I said you, you're off. not making like it. I'm not getting off. No, I think that people should still enjoy the games, even if it's like the hardcore. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that everybody has like the big issues sometimes in the life. So why I should have them in the game, you know, why I should like <laughs> to work hard, you know, it's like the, when we were uh, working on the, the trigger, we found like some specific behavior that the people start to work in our games, you know, so they are not playing the gameplays, which were a farm, you know, based on the farm, but based on the how much money they get, you know, yeah. so they were grinding stupid missions just because like the per minute, it was like the more like the money, you know, yeah. And this is why we wanted to change it to the in the Shadowgun Legends that we introduced the fame, you know. So it's like the, it was about something different, you know. It wasn't about mm. the money and whatever. And uh, this should be same in the in the in our game. It's about like the experience. It's about like the yeah. how you are what you are finding in the in the world uh, that every run is different because like the, there is a lot of aspects, you know. So it should be fun. And uh, yeah. yeah. And if somebody wants to troll or do bad stuff, okay, whatever, you know. Yeah. I like that perspective, you know what I mean? Because on one hand, you do kind of want to let the, the emergent gameplay, you want to create the world and let the players create the experiences. And sometimes sometimes that means somebody's trolling, but that can create a good experience when you finally kill them or whatever. Sometimes, you know, you're always going to have people that min-max everything and grind the money. But I like that perspective on, you know, 
people are always going to want to do that and min max gear but can there be other systems in the game that promote something else like the fame like you know promote um engaging with the game outside of just grinding money and that actually does add a benefit to the player and people will want to do that too um so yeah like, uh, you know our game is you don't need to do anything you can do like the just killing you will receive the loot you will still like to get some experience you will like the progress but slowly if you do stuff which we want or we build the systems like the quest for example then you will receive like the, you will progress faster you know you will have the more fun yeah. so it's not i was so upset like the, you know first vibe i was looking why i don't have the quest on these us guys you know uh oh, peacekeeper peacekeeper yeah. He's like the, I said, like, the, hey, this is only the guy which is not giving me quests, you know? And I was so upset. So I was digging, like, the why not? And and it was like the, the, the I had to kill some PvP guys, like the player guys, you know? Oh, yeah. I was, I was so upset, you know, because I didn't want to do PvP and they just killed me, like, the, some kind of the game just because I didn't kill, like, the players, you know? Mm. And this is what I don't like, you know? It's like the, it's a, just, you know, or like the, this decision, like, the, you do good stuff and you receive something and you select the bad stuff and you receive the unique. <laughs> help you know it's yeah. like the, hey okay it's like the, you will always select the like the the bad thing you know because you want this helmet yeah. you will never receive it this is not like the how they like to the push you you know so one of the uh one of the challenging points with quests i think with tarkov has historically been um the wanting to give players enough information to be able to like solve a problem or figure out like locate something where you want to give yeah. them hints right well at the same time <laughs> knowing that at some point there's going to be a maybe there already is, there probably already is, right? A gray zone wiki that tells you how to do everything. Mm -hmm. And the problem with Tarkov is people don't even bother to even try to figure it out in the game. They go to the wiki and the wiki yeah. tells them. But that's largely because the game doesn't. So I, I wonder, is that something that you think about um, in terms of like giving people quests and wanting to give them enough information <laughs> so that they can achieve the things without giving them, you know, like what, what is that balance there? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we changed the quests like the description a little bit we start to use the coordinates from the map so like the mostly for the pmc quest so because we were thinking like the hey you know it's like the pmc guys yeah. you know operator he should have the more information just like the somebody something you know so yeah. so we felt like it's not realistic so we put for example the screens of the like they are looking for something like for the free building so we put like the screenshots of the buildings we also put the locations there but this is like the, the big so you know it's not like the exact location we don't know if we will at least for the first uh, several quests we are doing it so it's like the more easy yeah i think later we will just like to be more uh, or there will be less informations uh i think it will still happen with the wiki you know it's like the people yeah. who want like the insta uh informations you yep. know or young guys or somebody who is in the hurry and has less time he will just go there we don't want to you know we were thinking about the random uh location for the quest items but on the other hand, it's like the contraproductive because you want to learn, you know, if you are playing the yeah. second life, you want to feel that you already played the first one, you know, so you want to be like the faster. And this is how you feel like the better, you know, but uh, if you want to make something, everything random, you will play the first vibe, same like the uh, second vibe, like the first vibe, you know, there is no yeah. like, this kind of the, I learned something, you know, I know something. <laughs> so, so it's very hard to balance it. I think, uh, yeah. I hope that there will be Vicky for the gray zone, you know? <laughs> there <laughs> there will. There, there will. will. And I'm sure That's, that there's also a balance too between yeah. you know, like it doesn't have to be entirely random. Even if it was in a house, but it could be mm -hmm. in fifty different places in a house under a bed. Like you actually feel like you're like I know mm -hmm. it's here like, and and yeah. looking for it is so mm -hmm. satisfying than just running to a place, picking up the thing and then leaving. Um yep. mm -hmm. feeling feeling like giving players the ability um to feel like they've solved a riddle or, or a mystery yeah. or you know discovered something if you give them the tools it's really satisfying if you mm -hmm. don't then you're you're just forcing them to go to the wiki mm -hmm. and that yeah so just to yeah. touch on something there um i don't know if y'all have anything to add also but i think it's a good time to touch on this subject quest items so i feel since it's a persistent uh, persistent world the quest items should not be tied to the quests. Let me explain exactly what I mean. So it's just, it's hard to word. Um, basically you start a quest and then the item pops up. That's not how it should be. The item should be there in the world where you're just explore, exploring randomly and you come upon an item that you could take, right? And you're like, okay, why can I take this? And then you take it, you put it in your inventory, then you bring it back to your base and you put it in the stash. 
Then later the quest comes up. Oh, you already found the fucking item. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So I feel that should kind of be the way it goes. But also, oh, you shit. might be like, you run into that quest a year from now or something. You know what I mean? And then you just, you have the item, right? And you don't remember yeah. where you got the item. So the lore there is kind of messed up. So it's, it's very iffy on how, how to play that how portion. Would you, how would you do if you get it and 20 seconds later another person get, goes there? Should the, should the item always be spawnable? Like, always be there? or It, it would probably have to be there for everyone on their screen. Yeah. So yeah. otherwise, Here's... you know what I'm doing as soon as I finish the first quest? I'm going back and taking the item again. Yeah. So that's... So, yeah. And... Unless you grab the item for the first time, that that's like something that wasn't talked about, you know. Or or grab it and put it in a bag, and then you grab it again at the same time, put <laughs> it in a bag that's on and, the floor, and then you just keep repeating, so you have tons of quests. That, no, yeah, I'm and just, that that's yeah. another thing too. So like, or will it work? Will with uh how Tarkov kind of works? So you have your task item um uh, slot portion. And nobody could get to it. You know how kind of trashy that feels? Because I'm in PvP, right? Somebody picks up a quest item. I kill them. I see that quest item. I should be able to grab it and at least sell it. Yeah, or... I think they talked about quest item will not be... Maybe not be able to put into secure containers. Yeah, so stuff like if that. You die, if you die, you're... Because otherwise, everyone will fast travel like that. Yeah. They will die with the quest item, go back, turn in the quest, take the new quest, fly back out, go to your where you dropped your uh, backpack, and ta-da! You have fast traveled. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, can I, can I hot take real quick? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely excuse my language, but fuck task item related quests i do not want them in gray zone i think they are stupid <laughs> specific tasks like picking up a pocket watch on customs no get rid of it it is the dumbest system in the world i do not like it i want to see more variety in task nature extracting information from computers on usb hard drives stuff like that where you're actually pulling information like the pmc factions are rather than going to grab stupid little items and then task related quests are related to items you actually find that do not are not specifically associated to a task a medical person is going to want medical supplies i want to be what able to find those medical uh, sorry, uh, d uh, the thing with the watch, is that a random drop, the watch? Then? No, no, I don't want, I, I, I don't want those type of, like, this is going to spawn no, no, at this I'm location and only this location, and you ah, have to go okay. retrieve this specific item. That doesn't spawn out in the world persistently. I want persistently spawning for quest items. Random things that you come across that might be worth selling, and you have to make a... Because you're new to the game, you don't know that that's a specific task item. You have to go, okay, maybe I should keep this because it's just kind of weird. It's kind of random. Why is this random person have a gold pocket watch on them? Then later on down the line, that ta that trader needs a golden pocket watch, but you sold it on to like whoever your collector is, whoever yeah. like a fence type character is. You sold it because it was worth a lot and you didn't think about it at the time. So now you have to go hunting random drops, random loot containers, random areas oh, where okay. it might yeah. it might yeah. spawn. So go look for it. Get rid of yeah. the task-related yes. stuff where you have to mark APCs and have... I, I like those things because you can buy those markers from traders. Those, those are fine. But when I have to go hunt a specific location, I don't want to look up a wiki to go find tasks, like yeah. they mentioned. Okay, okay, I don't okay. want so you mean, that. You mean I, missions for random items to spawn yes, in the world? You don't... Yeah, I, okay. I didn't I, understand what you meant, but okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I, um, I, 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 begin. For me, as long as it's an actual like lore item type thing and whatnot it so 150 missions for them to not seem crappy kind of like tarkov and how they've done things i i'm really curious to see what they have going on here i want to know I, it's just I, very I, I very do. weird tarkov i don't think even has 150 missions just saying i don't think it does i think it has like maybe 10 per trader but no, I think it has more than 150. Yeah. I Coming, think it, it was like 200 or something. 
Oh. Okay. Well, coming back to what you were saying. 191 over. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's not too bad. Um, coming back to what you were saying about quest items and stuff like that. Um, and the items being able to be taken. So perhaps it might be a good way to link that to a found in raid type system portion. I hate that system so much. But let me therapist. I start the game oh my with God. three Saluas. Take I know. the Saluas! <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to yeah. use that as an example. I hate the found raid system. I hate yeah. the I hate the secure container system. I hate how it automatically removes. Like, I found it in a raid. It was found on my body when they went and retrieved my secure container. Why is it not marked as found in raid? Mm -hmm. That system is stupid. It's dumb. It needs to be removed from existence and deleted off the face of the earth. What I hate I mean, the found in raid. What I... Quite, what I mean is, so, say you're a level 1, and you kill a level 40, who's on, like, mission fucking, who knows what, 3,000 by this point, whenever the fucking game's out, right? And they, MFG wants you to follow the lore. Well, guess what? We could follow the lore if the only option is to sell that piece of item. So that's basically what I'm linking to the found and raid system portion. You killed that operator, you should get everything he had. Because it's unrealistic that the operator went get a fucking piece of equipment, right? Like a fucking, like a pocket watch, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can't do anything with it. You can't see it, nothing. You didn't even know it was fucking on him, okay? But what happens if you're not on that mission and they want you to follow the lore, grab that item... It's not your item you found. You don't have the mission for it yet, and it's not coming up anytime soon because you're level one. He's level fucking 40, whatever the hell. You know, he's fucking 3,000 missions ahead of you, damn near. You take it, you could only sell it. Boom. Solves two problems in my eyes. You know, you could stick to the lore. You know there's an item like that that exists out there in the world, and since it's quest base, um, and you, you could only sell it, you know what I mean? You make money yes. from it. You you yes. get you get a benefit for killing someone that was high level, and it's realistic where you still see the item that was on him. And you I, I like put it in the secure container. Boom. To All wrap the around, I I I think what I messed up here in trying to say, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase it. I want task items to be found in the world randomly and do not spawn when the task becomes a thing. I hate that system. I want to go, okay, I need a GPU at, like, Quest 115. I randomly found a GPU. It's worth, for example, 900,000 rubles or whatever the equivalent of that currency would be. Quite a significant amount of money. Now I have the moral dilemma. Do I sell it to boost my gear and to boost my ability to um, come back from a bad raid or something like that? Or do I yes. keep it, hoping that it's going to pop up later on down the line? Or... yeah. I need it for a later a later point, and I do not want the game to tell me I'm going to need it at a later point. I want to have to either know so I can make that decision in my head. That's a system I want to see implemented because it makes sense in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I understand now. Yeah, because that was the, my dilemma as well. Like, if you know it's going to be a quest, you're just going to hoard it, and everyone is going to hoard all the uh, <laughs> all the quest items uh, for the future. Uh, and if you can't put it in, a, like, that's going to be one of the PvP in, in introductions. Like, oh, he might have a quest item on his, uh, on him. Yeah. So you don't have to get it from, well, yeah, later on. Um, but we'll that see. makes, if if there isn't a specific place it spawns, or it would have a specific place it spawns. I don't want it to spawn. In, not not so much a specific mm -hmm. place, but maybe say an area. Let's say you're looking for like a military radio, so it's only going to spawn yeah. at military bases. Or like, that's that's Unturned, for example. Unturned uses a system like that, where only certain okay. items spawn in certain places, and it's not random. Like Tarkov, you can find fucking anything in certain types of containers anywhere on any map. Basically, for the most part, there are some specifics yeah. to that. But like, let's say you're going to be looking for like a military radio or a rangefinder. That's a, a, a basically a, a binocular set of rangefinders. Yeah, you're going to be looking for that type of equipment in a specific location, and all they really tell you is look for. Uh, hey, I need to get a hold of a rangefinder. I'm not sure where you can find one, but I can point you in a few right directions. Say, hey, the 
whatever i can't i it's been so long to look at the map but the military base in the northeast sector might have some and you go take an extra you go take a helo over there you search it you don't find anything but you find a lot of really good loot because it's still a military base it's still going to have a lot of really good equipment and some of that equipment might be related to something later on down the line again brings up that more dilemma do i sell this for a lot of money do i potentially keep some of this gear to use or do i get rid of it because it's not my type it's russian i'm not a russian fan i don't run russian vests that that kind of idea basically what we're saying is mara rick whoever's watching this we need options, and we need this done better than Tarkov. You've already say it, said this. I'm going to repeat it in every single one of my videos. You're making the experience, not the frustration. And I will remind you of that every step of the way, brother. And we really feel I, that you will be able to pull this off. And if you do, you're going to be... Your studio will be bigger than EA fucking all of them before not too long. If you long. don't sell out. Yes, don't, sell, don't out. sell out. Do not sell out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Believe you me. Oh God. Believe if I you see me. cheats, if I see cheats uploaded uploaded by Imara, I'm gonna lose my head. No, no, no. that's not Do what not I meant. Do not pull a I I meant uh, he sell outs to like a big like EA or something. So the EA oh, will control. Yeah, don't don't the take direction. on a publisher. Don't take yeah, on a publisher. Yeah, yeah. Just stay self published. Keep going. You're gonna get money in the end if the game is good. <laughs> yeah it'll Hans. it'll be awesome what's up Hans we're um, about halfway through this now uh, so I think Sap wanted to say something maybe oh yeah no, good for it okay, okay. Uh, yeah basically I, I think we've covered this portion we can move on and then Hans will see a bright new future ahead of him of um, <laughs> the halfway point of the video which has now taken an hour and 50 minutes, roughly. I, I was about to say it's been like two hours, hasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. So we I basically said have if two more hours to go. 30, I was <laughs> getting off on Fallout. I might still get on Fallout, but just still participate. I'll pull yeah, it up on my do, second monitor. <laughs> do as you wish. Do as you wish. Just don't scream in the background if you can help it. Um, I don't push rage to talk. Fallout. But uh, I'm going to continue real quick. Yeah. All right. yeah. And I don't think it requires too much. Like, you know, and I think that's kind of where some of the Tarkov quest design, where it's like, go find this thing on customs. Like, that's way too little information for me to know but with gray zone because the uh, map's so big and you've got these cities being able to be like even just it's in this city with a building with this graffiti on it yeah the guy drives least, a black car you know yeah, it doesn't like even just a little bit of that information i feel like players i feel like the natural state of a player is they want to stay in the game so even just a little bit of information i feel like most players will like well let me try and find it first before i have to go to the wiki but in a game like tarkov where there's just no information there's like not even a place to start well then i just have to immediately go over there so even just a little bit i feel like people want to look a little it's, bit you, you have to somehow balance you know in the in the mobile when we <laughs> like the pull or how to say like put so many information inside so everything was understandable oh yeah and the people were always because the goal was like to keep them in the game but there was no community because like mm. the, you didn't want to like the, ask somebody for something, you know, because everything was in the game. So it's like the, if everything is like the, so understandable and they are not leaving the game, there is no community. And when there is no community, there is no like the, you know, boost yeah. or something. So That's true. or they are not watching the you, you know, you will lose the guys, you know, it's like the, the viewers because like the why they will watch you, you know, it's like the, they are watching you because they are trying to find the information and how you play it, how you yeah. get it, you know. So I think it's, it should be. I think the Tarkov is very popular in the in the on the streaming because or on the videos because people learn from it. You know, because it's people don't know what they're doing. So people they have no idea. Yeah. That's yeah. actually a fair point, though. That's a fair point that the wiki and the the con general confusion create a community of people that ask each other questions. So that's a fair point. Yeah, and and the, the other interesting aspect of that too is that depending on where your perspective, um, where you're coming from. In Tarkov, Nikita wanted a challenge and he wanted like a puzzle, but didn't give information in a lot of the quests f to solve it. So yeah. then they, the solutions get put in the wiki and then he, they don't like the idea that, oh, well, then you just go to the wiki to solve it. So then they have to make it random and even more complicated. Mm -hmm. So the wiki can't be the answer. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I really like your perspective because uh, I hadn't thought about the whole that community aspect of, yeah. of this kind of mystery solving, figuring out you know, information sharing, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, now you you mentioned in that response where you were saying like you know you want people to feel like they play and they learn and then the next time there's a wipe they feel like they learned uh i actually don't know much about this but like can you talk about what wipes are going to look like what progression is going to look like because i think 
sometimes th that that can be taken, you know, all the way to its logical conclusion where if every wipe, if the game wipes, but everything is the same and I've learned everything, then it becomes boring because I can just like in two weeks, I can go through everything because I've done it enough times. And now what do I do? So like, what are your thoughts on wipes? Okay, so the vibes will be like the vibes, you know? Yeah. Everything is gone. You're starting again. Uh, we won't, we won't uh, rotate the factions, you know? So if you play for the Mitras and you start on the bottom, then you're starting on the right, you know? So yeah. we rotate the factions. So if you if you will want to play for the same faction, you're basically in the different uh, different mm. location. The quest and everything on the beginning is same, and uh, but it's in the, a little bit like the different, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, because there is like the, it's early access, a lot of stuff will change, you know? Of course, Everything, yeah. A lot of new buildings, you know, uh, a lot of open buildings, a lot of uh, new AIs, a lot of new class, like the things will change. We will introduce the crafting and all these things, you know, skills. So there is like the, every vibe, you know, the first vibe should be, or second season should be about the day night, you know, it will be completely different. Oh. So, so you cool, will yeah. just, be, because it will change every few hours, and uh, you have to really think about it, you know, you will have to put some kind of the night vision, you know, in the probably in the secure container because they will be expensive. Yeah. You have to, like the, you know, it's not like the, that you are choosing the time, you know, yeah. so you are prepared, you have to think about it. So, so it will change a lot. I want to bring up a point about the day night cycle because that, that, that brings up an idea of the economy to me. I want the economy to be realistic. It should not be cheaper for me to go buy a pair of quad nods than an HK416. That makes no sense. You can go pick up a really high quality AR upper and barrel and build a full like AR-15 that would be competent to a level of an HK-16 for roughly, I don't know, seven to 8,000, depending on the attachments that you're going to run. And a G pair of GPNVGs are going to cost you anywhere from 20 to 30 grand. I want that kind of realism in this. I want, I want there to be a certain level like you can go pick up cheap plate carriers and put really good mm -hmm. plates in them yeah and i would love to see that kind of system to where yes you can run a kit it may not be the best kit but you know what it's a cheap kit but it's still going to fulfill the purpose that you want to resolve but when the day night cycle comes in and the the second wipe or season two as you referred it's going to change everything because now nvgs are going to be very very important thermal scopes fleers are going to be very very important because it's going to change how you fight and your ability to fight at night because running around with a flashlight is going to make you a sitting duck at night you're you're just going to be seen everywhere yeah. and i want the day and night cycle to be realistic we're in the jungle in southeast asia it is dark you can't see yeah. nothing unless there's street lights near you. Yeah. I, and I, I want I want the moon to be realistic as well. Yes. <laughs> Earlier part of the night cycles is gonna be pretty lit up. The latest part of yeah, it's gonna be pretty lit up, but when it goes to full like three to four AM or, or yeah, and uh, every three or four night cycle swaps, there's there's no moon coverage, meaning it's gonna be pitch black. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. I want the like the new moon, half moon. Like, I want that gradual. I don't want to, like have three moons. I would, I would like to have like ten different moons, so ten different lightning. Um, that would be really cool to have. Uh, and the moon to yeah. actually affect the water and monsoons and stuff. Yes, because no, they've already yeah. talked about the monsoons. Yeah, I would love to see so, that. I. Yeah, that would be actually cool. As uh, actually high tide when there's a full moon, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it would but, be to go. Okay, it's gonna be high tide. It's monsoon season. I am yeah, getting yeah. off for the next couple yeah, of yeah. hours because I do not yeah. want to deal with that logistical the, nightmare. The thing is, you could also see that in the future. You know, you can see the estimated value for the moon and whatnot. The projection for the week. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. You have like so a moon calendar. Yeah. Like you will actually have a moon calendar. Like, okay, on Thursday, 3 a.m. EU, EU time, at yeah. this time, we will have like a full moon. You so probably we can don't do want to go boots trade. on the ground. <laughs> or yeah, stuff that, like that, or, you know? Or, 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 like, or oh, you do, because yeah. the AI is going to be less frequent and they're going to be less popular because now they're going to be holding up in buildings, taking cover from the monsoons. Yeah. And you're going to be able to freely move a lot easier the patrols are going to be slower because they're not going to be able to run vehicles around because the roads are flooded like everything's yeah. going to change with the monsoon i hope that's what they're implementing it's not just all the same i, I have I faith tomorrow monsoon, and monsoon weather is going to be six months after the day and night cycle yeah i i think that's going to be the wipe after that 
this is going to yeah, be yeah, a exactly. very important and great podcast for some of the mods to take uh, consideration into. You, dude, there's like right off the bat, like five different things that I haven't even thought of until now. And it's like, oh, God. This is why you always bring me in. I have this, great ideas. Dude, this is why I bring <laughs> all of you people in. <laughs> Definitely me. Yes, Fucking Zach, right. you contributed the, so much. The laughs. <laughs> it's it's going to be great. It's, it's really Every 20 great. minutes, Zach says five words, and we all enjoy every single bit of it. <laughs> it will? All right. No. No, oh, <laughs> do not i will start soundboarding that is a child <laughs> uh, all right i'm uh <laughs> i'm putting it back you know same like the weather will change a lot uh skills will change a lot you know they will like add like a lot of new quests uh the crafting and all these things in your room basically because we don't have hideout you know pmc are not hiding they have their own <laughs> room in the container or whatever yeah but, um, and this is like the then we will open the the Hope the, base. the main zone you know the ground zero yeah. so it's like the also you know a lot of things then you know anomalies and a lot of like the uh things Did he just say anomalies to, you, know, to learn, you know how they look yes. what they are doing to you it's like That's the, what Rick I think was for talking the few about. years we have he, uh, every vibe will completely I'm change telling the you, there's going to be aliens. <laughs> I told you there's going to be aliens. And you it's, guys dinosaurs. it's dinosaurs back to podcast one, baby. <laughs> so, when, so when I spent four hours doing the whole topic things and notes and watching this, and I had to go back three times, like, did he actually say anomalies? Like, wait, wait what? <laughs> like, you see, anomalies. like... Where the fuck Fo was Rick Foxy, here, That's right? why Foxic wanted to run in there and just unplug his computer. Yeah, I understand now. Because <laughs> Rick was sitting behind a camera, I think, because I talked to him. And I was like, dude, he said Anom Anomalist. Or is that going to be in the game? It's like, mm, yes, it's going to be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was so close to just like slapping in his head. Like, shut up. So, yeah. It's, okay, too much. Oh, yeah. He, he's going to say a couple of things as well that he, he's not supposed to say. We're just getting in the juice, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yep. yeah. Let's, uh, let's continue for a second here. I, I didn't consider this, but the factions, I hadn't even thought about that. Like, will, will how much uh, eventually, because maybe early access might be hard at the beginning, but how much will your experience as the player change based on the faction you choose outside of what location on the map? Do they have different quest lines? Because I never thought about that, where it's like, if you want to wipe to be different, you could just choose a different faction, and that might shape your experience differently as well. I, I wanted on the beginning that, like, the everything is same in every faction, so it's like the, you know, people are not choosing... Like the, they are not regretting of choosing the faction, you know. Yeah, at the start. So, yeah, at the start. But uh, and uh, so they have the same class, same NPC, same like the shops, whatever. But the guys are pushing on me that we should change it and we make like the we should make the free games basically inside. Yeah, yeah. So we will have the, a lot of other systems. Maybe we will change it, introduce uh, to every faction really like the new they go with different, uh, different uh, <clears throat> NPCs, different quest lines. You know, we yeah. will change them, and then you can play the game like the three times, and you know. Because I definitely understand that fear of not wanting it to just be, well, this faction's meta, so everybody picks that faction, and then, like, that's not fun. But yeah. I do think that there's something there where if it can be balanced, if the experience can be different enough, that introduces a ton of replayability, because maybe I want this faction now, maybe I want to play this faction. So mm. that's fascinating. I, I like that. Okay. So basically, uh, to touch base on the anomalies real quick, there are different types of anomalies, statistical anomalies. Security anomalies, environmental anomalies, financial anomalies, and medical anomalies. I'm not sure if ChatGPT is giving me all the correct answers, whatnot, because it doesn't sound like it is. But uh, environmental anomalies can be unexpected seismic activity or things such as, like, you know, where we just talked about it, uh, monsoons, you know, I, I don't know. Shit like that. Monsoons. Because anomaly refers to the reference as something that's not supposed to happen. I, yeah. No, yeah. anomaly it's anomaly refers to something that's not supposed to happen realistically in any sense of normality. It, Norm anomaly inconsistent. No, 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 no. It does not happen in our real world. That is an anomaly. It, it's it's so unheard of that it is considered past super rare to the point that it is considered impossible, but it still does exist. That is an anomaly by definition. Um. That that is what is genuinely accepted. When you think of anomalies, you think of aliens, uh, death robots, you do. anything. You do anything that like a monsoon. 
is a natural disaster. That is not an anomaly because that is a normal thing that happens every in, certain season in Southeast Asia. In but this if sense, that happens though, every six, uh, if that happens every six days, that now becomes an anomaly. Yes. So in anomalies that sense, are essentially de deviations or inconsistencies from the norm is basically what yeah. it's saying. I yes. still do not think this is anything to deal with aliens, but besides the point, um, what Mara basically stated on what really we need to speak about right now, because this is a main thing, the playability. You could get 3x the playability if you incorporate... Um, uh, yeah, three different the, kind of quest systems. Yes, or, or, but, but three diff different kind of uh, main quests. Th three X, but it's also one more. Basically, what I'm saying. So that technically, you can do four different playthroughs. That's the span of like two years. Four. Or yes. Four? Uh, I just I forgot Bandits? the. Uh, if you go rogue, that portion, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is oh, not confirmed yeah, yeah, yet the in the game, if yeah. you incorporate that it, some kind of way. Yeah, 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 not confirmed yet, but if you do that, yeah. which it it later on in the video, or did we talk about server expansions yet? And the uh, possibility no. of? Okay, well, that's later on. But yeah. if you expand the server, and you're now not just 48 pl people, uh, players, you add another 16, Rogue Faction. Boom, right there. Yeah. Guess what? Another playability option. That's the span True. of two years if you're wiping and every you six fucking about it. months. Yeah, and if you think about it, two years is a lot of time for content updates. So by the time you're rolled back around to the first faction mm. you started with, things have completely revolutionized themselves because they're so focused on making content updates. This... Now the quest line is different. The progression is different. The stash system is different. Maybe there's different unique stash options that you could do. Customization, or not stash, but your, your, uh, your tent, your whatever you guys are. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably do you, an, an excerpt on this since it's just going to be a long ass fucking video. But look, so, if yeah, they do so this, Mara, it's going to be fucking insane. The playability yeah, I, is going to be remarkable. Mara, listen to us. This <laughs> will be unimaginable for this game. Look. I think I, the I, devs is telling me to do it as well. I think it's I've, the next couple of seconds. I've already stated already the, best, it. the best option right now, I'm not sure if you could exactly do this or not, but do a pre-order for Steam. Gauge how many people want this fucking game. Make two other options of how you want to play, pay for the game, okay? Um, a standard edition and two other editions, okay? Uh, you want to charge your, like, what we estimated was $25 to $35, okay, for the standard. Do other Please editions. Please don't go over $60 if, with your other editions. So. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I, I will I'm up buy your to $200, yeah. if anything. I, I, will, am, I will drop that on that game. Euler, actually, just like, oh, I'm on All right, bro, just my stock. <laughs> but listen, if they do this, this can change the gaming space. They could hire more people for, for MFG. I'm talking about the yeah. gaming space for MFG. They could hire more people, get more quests out there, and actually start implementing this sooner. And if they do, that seven-year outlook could turn into four-year outlook, three-year outlook. I doubt they could get it sooner than three years to do all of this shit that now they yeah. could have, unless they expand 500%, a 5x of their current uh, company standards right now. What they have what they have. Working for that? I, I think, oh, fuck. I, I somebody think, said 80. I, I honestly have no idea. Yeah. If you have an early access on Steam, don't you have to name a date? And that's the thing that I I think they no. don't want to do. A, a, lot, of, a lot of games. No, okay, so don't. for when you pre-order, dude, it's not an early access. It's a pre-order. Pre-orders do ah, not pre have to ah, have okay. a date. I pre-ordered Starfield two years well, ago. <laughs> See, that's I, what I, I mean. Well, yeah, wait, you wait, you do you, not have you, to have a release date. Can, can, can you pre-order yes. an, e pre an EA, though? That's okay, you, technically, a pre-order gives you access to EA. 
That's what a lot of games do. Uh, yes, Battlefield yes, 2042 yes. had a two week early access for all pre orders. Um, yeah, yeah. And but they don't I'm have saying... to follow certain parameters with that on Steam. You can have as long as an early access as you want, as far as I'm concerned. No, no, as far as no. I'm aware. I mean, can you actually pre order an early access? Because they don't have, they haven't released early access right now, right? But if they add no, 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 a yeah. uh, pre order tomorrow, can you actually pre order an uh, e early access yes. version? When they, they do, you could, you could have pre ordered okay. 2042 yeah. six months prior to them releasing the two week open beta uh, or the closed beta access. Another... I bought it the second they announced the game, and it was still four or five months away before they even released their early access. Another option, because I know Mara is very, very smart because he did market fucking research. I know for a fact he did market research on how much money do we need to be able to get this game to the seven-year outlook. Yeah. Okay? Even if it fails in the beginning. I'm sure he has factored into... All those accounts. Think about this. Even if you do just the pre-order, say with the EA access, he was only going to charge $25. Do the pre-order $25 and give a little extra thing for somebody, uh, for, for whoever pre-orders, you know? Maybe yeah, they, they get the game early for things. five days or something. And then the okay. actual early access, it's $5 more. So now it's $30. This is a, right now, with everything I'm seeing... This is the forty dollar game. I would pay forty dollars yeah. for this. I I would pay eighty dollars for an ultimate edition on this game and not not yeah, not be affected by it. Come from the guy thing. He didn't want it to go over sixty. <laughs> I'm talking about for their like first level. I, I, I you gotta realize it okay, depends okay. on the content that we're getting. I don't just want a fucking name tag for paying double what the pri uh, no, price. No of no the no game no is. yeah 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 yeah. No, no, I want I, there to I be some level what? of cosmetics. I I, I don't but want don't an advantage. A little like I don't. I, I do not. <laughs> I want to I be like want... for two hundred dollar version. No, that's right. no, 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 no. I, like, I do not Mara want has... an advantage over other players because I yeah. bought a pre access. I do not want a bigger stash. I don't want a bigger secure container. I do not want that. That is, it takes away from grinding. It really does, in my opinion. Oh, okay, okay. So they've said they won't add cosmetics to the game. So why not? Why not put like... different? Uh, sets no, of clothing no, they in and like, like they that. don't want they don't, okay they're gonna have clothing but they don't gonna have like paid cos uh, cosmetics and that would count as a paid cosmetics so in if the if they're gonna do the ultimate i would think the better choice would be if you're interested to be an alpha tester like for the next patch like you get it a month ahead or something that would if be you interesting pay for if you pay for ultimate, because I don't want any kind of Ooh. skins, uh, camos, or something attached to ultimate. I would rather mm. have. Do you want to support us a month ahead on the alpha te uh, and do an, uh, be an alpha tester for the next version? Do you know what else is a good on idea? Ultimate or, or or standard, you just get it day uh, like day when it released. The next one is okay. You get a week ahead, and the ultimate you get a month ahead or something. That's I would rather have it be like that instead of camos or anything else. You know what else is a good that idea? Um, becoming a tester. So mm. say the ultimate version, yeah. you have separate servers and basically a separate install, like some games do. I I yeah. think Armory for Forger. free, but Armory Forger, Forger has it. Armory Forger has yeah, an experimental you, mode, and you can test out the new yeah. updates on it. You, you're a tester now, and you could get like a cool like Discord role or whatever. You know, I, I yeah, would that, do that just for that, honestly. Yeah. To be able to yeah, test that, the game, pre-test, and and send out my suggestions for yeah, and make yeah, it exactly. limited time too, so you know like the people that are <laughs> testing your game are dedicated to it. Because like if you release it like let's say tomorrow. And you just have it open to the point where early access ends. And after early access is over, you can't get access to this tester edition anymore. Yeah. Then that gives you the people who started with this game and started in its very beginning are giving their honest opinions based on what they positive seen from feedback. the beginning and what they yeah, positive not not so much not so much positive feedback, but more constructive criticism yeah. on the features that they don't like and they see maybe uh, new developers come in and they start to add a different vision and it's not what the game originally wanted it to be. Yeah. I see Mara and some of the older and some of the later devs 
a couple years down the line, losing their sight on their vision, but their player base will never, at least the beginning players, yeah. because we're so dedicated. I'm sitting here dedicating two hours of my life, over two hours now. Dude, I've done probably five hours of podcast at this point oh, to a game I've never that. even fucking played. Yeah. Because I love the idea and the premise of it. It scratches yeah. every single tick I've ever wanted in a game before, besides the fact I can't fly a Huey and blow shit up in Vietnam. <laughs> but, anyways, back to my point. While, while listening to uh, Fortunate Son by uh, Clear, yeah. Clear Reading Square yeah. Water. God, I, I, I want to go play Real Forger now just because I want to go. But it, yeah. this, this is the world. thing, though. We, we've seen portions of they are listening in quotations. I'm referring to. Yeah the map size and the video we did last night that they made yeah. the map bigger and i'm the did only they really? one yeah they made the map bigger 100 percent uh how yeah, ground zero ground yeah zero. uh that's what i meant yeah sorry thank you for the clarification ground zero is bigger and uh remember you was in oh, the first wait, podcast stop, right. we talked yeah. about how small it was and that was my con uh concern like, and then yeah. I mentioned the tunnel system and how it may be bigger than it actually looks and maybe and that they, just red they, purple was yeah, they What's might up? not even have a freaking tunnel system right now, and you gave them an idea like, oh, shit, we could, yeah, we could incorporate a tunnel system. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they, like, they might not even been thinking about that right now, but you can't, you can't base a game right there on the fact of Ground Zero, have it small, and also not be that interesting. It has to be stupid interesting. If it ain't stupid interesting, don't bother. You know what I mean? Don't even just make it a regular fucking game at that point. But besides yeah. the point, uh, basically what we just covered, Mara, I'm I'm exerting this video. I'm sending it to Foxic, sending it to Rick. It's probably going to be a 10 minute roll, not a Rick roll, but um, it's going to be a roll. <laughs> uh, I know we make that joke every time, but um, look, you're listening to people who's been in this server constantly, nonstop. We are willing to pay a high dollar amount do not I'm screw up by making only one edition and a standard edition at that you need to make yeah. multiple editions i'm sorry i'm sorry if that's not your vision that you want to yeah let's make it a good game and just focus on that you we want this game to grow faster imagine you set a seven year fucking roadmap and you beat that you could throw that in nikita's face i know you want to <laughs> yeah. i know you yeah, want like to like instead of just having the day night cycle, you combine the monsoon system and the and the day night cycle yeah. into one update because you were able to afford to hire new developers who were more experienced in that kind of tech because it, you yeah. came out with a pre order system and you had I don't know there's forty nine thousand people in your Discord half of that just bought the standard pre order and that's what hold on what's twenty five thousand times forty let's uh, just let's just do some math here let's do forty. More than enough money to fucking hire more that people. Is, I, that is, I would say, uh, I have an <laughs> even over better a number million for dollars. you. I've got an even better number for you, Sin. Um, there are eighty thousand. There are over eighty thousand people wish listing. Yeah. Grey's on exactly. Warfare on Steam right exactly. now. Exactly. Exactly. So just um, the twenty five thousand I was well, talking I, sorry, about. Sorry, I, at... I was in the toilet. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't just the twenty five thousand uh, uh... I was talking about, Mara, is a million dollars at the standard edition, and I guarantee you, there's going to be at least a thousand of those that are going to buy an upper edition, if not more. I'm giving a very, very grounded estimate here. It could go way exponentially yeah. higher than that. If you release these editions on pre-orders, don't give us early access any any sooner to the standard one. Please refine your game, make it solid, because a launch dictates how a game goes look at yeah. battlefield 2042 they finally fixed their systems after years of development it's turned out okay it's not bad but they're having to lower the price to eight dollars to sell copies of the game at this point that's why dice is dropping yeah. the project and they're not doing any more seasonal updates do not start with a buggy launch in an early or an early beta test please yeah. i don't care if i have to wait until june 15th for christ's sakes if it takes you two months to get to a point where it's early access, I just want to start up. I want to get home from work after working 10, 15, or 10 to 12 hours and get on my computer and enjoy the game and not complain about the bugs and the stupid AI and the fact the quest system is too hard and the fact I can't make any progress because I'm getting sniped from 300 meters. I do not want that. I want a good, refined, polished product if I'm going to pre-order this. I will. Yeah, Even if it's shit, I'm giving my money. I don't care. Imagine I, don't know, I want to say one thing. Oh, go for it. I'm not paying to be your play tester. 
Your, um, your idea is stupid, tactical. Oh my God. Do not be like, oh, I'll no, pay I... to be in. Nah, that's retarded. It's... That's stupid. That's brain dead. Anyway, right. Uh, no, it, that's, that's, no, that's I mean, in like, an addition um... to what they could add in. That's not, I'm not paying uh, just $200 for that. I will give you my credit that. card information with a $3,000 cap if you let me in a VIP. Oh right. my God. Give <laughs> me no. free IP. No, I, free I am IP. not paying for that. Uh, Another thing is, I'm not sure if they could add this in later, multiple editions, and you could upgrade. I'm sure they can. I think I've done that before on Steam, but yeah, just just for shits and giggles, they need more than one at launch. Okay, I don't care what they add in. If it's a fucking Discord roll, if it's like three dollars more, five dollars more, I don't care. They need to gauge what people like want this game more and want to help it more something like that it, getting my but words all access, fudged but um it's early access um, early access should start exactly the same time for everyone there shouldn't be you shouldn't be able to pay to get yes yes yes, yes. I, I agree with that a hundred percent yeah I, yeah. Now, when it comes to playing the later versions, like season two, a couple weeks oh, early, yeah. that's yes. more realistic with the versions. Yeah. But I do not want there to be paid access to early uh, to experience the game earlier because I feel like what's yes. going to happen is those people who pay are going to have a worse experience in those couple of weeks than the people who just wait and pay the normal exactly. forty dollars. Yeah. I think it should genuinely just wait. Yes. Yeah, so just early just release it at the same be... time for everyone. Yeah, early access should be the same for everyone. The later wipes, let's call them that, because that's, that's what they are. The uh, later wipes, if you pay for ultimate, you can get maybe two weeks ahead, and then you can, uh, like, did you, they're going to make you, like, just so you know, this is not a finished product. If you find any bugs, report that if you can, and, like, they implement a real test, stand like a standalone test server, just for the people that bought Ultimate, basically. Yeah. Uh, and, and they listen to their should, suggestions and stuff yeah, a little and more. That that should be it. Like that should be they, like they, they shouldn't add lots of other stuff on it. Like it should be a choice. Do you want to be able to report bugs, test test the game a week earlier? The quest isn't gonna be there. It's just a core gameplay. I think it would be the best thing. Uh, with, maybe some quests, but the new ones at least. With the amount of money that they could possibly bring in, they could make a dedicated team just to the playtest portion. Like Yeah, and all they all they really have to realistically do look at look at how successful their very first playtest was with the content creators. Just give us that. Don't give us unrestricted access for a certain amount of weeks. Just maybe invite us to a play session. Or yeah open it up with a separate version install and say, hey, the servers are open for the next eight hours. Go check out the new features we're planning on adding in the next update. Yeah. yeah so, and uh, this and you've already people... announced these features. You've already made this public in the Discord. You're just letting people actually experience it who paid for your project before there was any truth or revelation about it. This will We don't only... know the truth about what's getting in this game yet. We really don't have the slimmest idea because there's so much that hasn't been covered. And I love that. I love speculation. This Makes will, my day so much more interesting. This will only make people feel more special and get this out to more people. It, it, it's it's amazing. I with the playtest portion, if they would uh, be to do so, I don't know how it would go around by being like NDA or anything, or if it would just be open. Like, hey, look, we're testing this new feature. Say they add in, oh, the monsoon stuff or something. You know, and then I think it should be in day basically. I don't. Okay, so here's the thing. Well, so that if it's only if it's a couple not, weeks, if it's not, just yeah. real quick, hold on. It, if it's not, it would push more people to perhaps want to buy that version, helping fund the game further to where they could also just get more people on board to push the game out faster. It's all about getting things done fast and efficiently. There is yes. a cap. I feel. For a, for a game of this size, where it's like, okay, look, we, we can't have this many people working on the game, okay? It's it's going to be hard to manage, you we know, have, stuff like that. We have like an office of 7,000 people working on a single game. But, <laughs> but another thing is, they need to learn from Tarkov and their mistakes, okay? Th this is the perfect game to relate to with different editions and the size of this game 
and it being something new. Think about it. Tarkov was the first of its kind. This is basically the first of its fucking kind, okay? Yeah, there's no there's... other fucking goddamn game at, like this, okay? You gotta look at it damn near yeah. almost the same. Not in the sense of, oh, you extract in Tarkov. Well, you're technically extracting Grey Zone 2, but it's to a safe location. No, not in that fucking sense. It's the first game of its kind, okay? They could learn from Tarkov and all their mistakes. Do a different edition, fun your game faster, get it out faster than fucking Nikita, and gloat about it all fucking day. And also, fuck it. You get enough money doing this with multiple editions? Make an arena-type based game. Don't call it arena, though. And do that for your PvP players. I love I, that. I, 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 want, it. I want it. That. I'm I, telling I, you right now, I want it. I oh, hate yeah. Tarkov with a burning passion because of its or because of what Nikita's done, but I do love Arena. It is fun. Dude, it, it is it so is much actually fun. enjoyable. And pre orders should not be launched tomorrow or whatever. It should be oh, whoa, 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 wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You, yeah, yeah. You think he's listening right now? Like, what? No, 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 That's no, a hypothetical. No, no. Hold on. Are you him? Are you him, Hold No, no. <laughs> I know why Zap doesn't talk. He's got a fucking voice changer. That's Mara, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mara. It's Mara. If, I mean, if... Your when, English if, is so if, good. If you, no. <laughs> if you send, uh, send it to Rick or Foxic or whatever, if they listen... Pre-order should be when Mara or the developer teams feel that, okay, we have a working early access version right now. Now we can release the uh, pre-order. Because if they release the pre-order, let's say, this week, and the game doesn't go into early access for maybe next two months, people are going to get quite mad. They want early... No, 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 no. But here's the thing, right? So if you release the pre-order after the 18th playtest is done for the two weeks... People are going to be interested in the product now because there is no yes. NDA attached to that. So yes, I'm pretty sure with that playtest, there's long. no NDA. Real no, that's what I'm saying. It's not. It's open. It's open. But the pro the problem I see is if it takes too long after the 18th, it's going to be a problem because people will start refunding because oh the game isn't out yet. I can wait to next month. I think like when they see they're like okay. Everything under early access is done in two weeks. Now we can release the pre-order. They shouldn't release the pre-order too early and not too late. They should be just in the sweet spot when they think, okay, we're going to be done in two weeks. Now we release it. Look, That's when the hype will start. Like, okay, it's super close to release. I think that's better than releasing it at like the 18th or whatever. Um, um, and then wait two months. Another thing to add on, which is very important and you just made me think of, is Mara even stated it. These big developers and all, uh, EA, fucking Battlefield, all this shit that's going on, yeah. they just don't make strives to be better and go for it. They don't put risk yep. on the table. Mara, put the risk on the table. Take your own words of advice. Multiple editions, you're hearing it from freaking five different people. I've said this in another podcast. We didn't go to it into it as a uh, in much depth or whatnot. But also, you have forty something thousand people in the Discord, right? Do a poll. Almost 50. Do a fucking yes. poll. You need more polls yeah. out there. Tell Foxic, get off his ass. Make some polls. <laughs> we want to see how many editions you want. How much money would you want to spend on the game for the maxed edition? Uh, Stuff like that. We need those polls. Gauge off of the community's interests. That's what you need to do. Upgradable editions. Upgradable, upgradable editions. editions. What would you like yes. to see in those upgradable editions? So, and if you're going to make an arena mode, do not make it the same price as the full game. If you're going to make it a separate paid access, no, and no, no. Please, it, for the love of God, it could be just at that rate. DC, after listening, to it's going to be within it's, the standard edition, even because we are going to give them so I much more extra money. By just listening to I, this, I they really wish they would just DLC. Do that. <laughs> I, like make it DLC make it a fifteen dollar edition. Yeah, just make it fifteen yeah. bucks. It, yeah, like you have to DLC. realize that you're cutting the content from the main game down to like ten percent of just the gunplay and the armor system instead of yeah. everything that makes the game the game. Because people love the gunplay and the armor system, they love the PvP aspect, but they they're more exhausted by the fact that they want to compete and feel good about themselves and maybe Dude. hone their PvP skills. Because there's not a lot of opportunity to hone because players mm -hmm. play tremendously different to AI. And when you run into a player in a PvE PvP game, you're going to 
suck. Do you because you're just used to fighting AI? Better servers. Do you even more know how easy servers. it is to fucking do this? Do you even know? <laughs> Look, the the map is already there. You take the er excerpts of what fucking POIs they have, and you just yeah, make yeah, a yeah. singular map out of that, and you put it into another game that's just PvP. Yeah. So no, simple. And yeah, but it shouldn't be another game. It should just be a Steam DLC, basically. It's still in the core game, but or, you need to yeah. unlock it with DLCs. You, that too. You could easily do that too. I mean, look at Call of Duty. And, Call of Duty yeah, is fucking yeah. 200 gigabytes, bro. If this, this, I guarantee you, okay, look. Let's just run a little quick uh, thought right now. How much gigabytes do you think this game's going to be? I'll go first. I'll say 35 gigs right off the bat. EA, 35 okay. gigs. EA 35, 35 full version after everything's done, like after the seven year plan, I'm gonna shoot for 70 to 80. Yeah. Wow, Honest you are very optimistic. <laughs> Honestly, for release, I'm say 55 gigabytes. On for full release, release or EA? EA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, EA. 55, 55 is definitely in that range too. It depends. Now, you got a point, though, because how much was rendered at once? The thing that is, they're giving us an optimized version already, so that's why I said 35. But it is sure. a huge game. I'll go for, like, 40. Okay, okay. I'm, go I'm already going to be that. the high, uh, high <laughs> roller, then. I I'm going to say 100 for EA. Oh, <laughs> shit! No, this dude's going yeah, deep! Well, I'm going to go ahead and just cut you off right there. Nope. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Unreal, Unreal Engine 5, with that kind of graphics, I play Hunt Showdown. It's poorly optimized game. It has shite graphics, and that's 50 gigabyte. I He's got a point. Let's, I don't, yeah. let's look at... I don't know. Let's look at Breakpoint I, for a second. Breakpoint's only a 25 square kilometer map, I believe, and it's still like 75, and that was made in... Uh, similar engine to what Unreal Engine 4 would be. I don't know if it was produced in UR4, yeah. but um, he's got a point because that it, it could be near 100. It yeah, really could, just because of the size and the, the amount of... All the games are lazy optimized. Like, they're just like, I, we don't give a fuck about space. Just make it look good. But if they optimize it good, it could go down very, very, like, like so much. But I don't think <clears throat> at EA it's going to be 100 gig release. It's going to be like 125 because <laughs> that's when they like done everything and optimized it. Not, yeah, to cut us, and all that. not to cut us too, too short, but we are 50 minutes out of 120 minutes. Yeah, and yeah. we're almost three hours in. Jesus. So all right, go with the video. Yeah, let's do yeah. this video. Done. We love you, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah. No, I was I was just gonna say I think that's uh I think that there's a lot of potential and it makes a lot of sense what you're saying about like especially since it's early access each wipe is gonna be <sighs> introducing features that'll really make it um make it yeah, feel different. Somebody there was like the one comment that even we don't have the clear vision, you know, we have the clear <laughs> vision, you know, we yeah, have, like the design for the like the next several years, but of course a lot of things will change and we don't yeah. have to, you know we don't want to follow the design just because we make the design, you know, if the people will play it differently or they will start to asking for different things, it's like the. The gray zone was like the, on the beginning was mostly tactical shooter, but we never were thinking about the uh, the guys, for example, from the Ghost Recon. You know, when somebody like the start to command it, hey, this looks like the Ghost Recon, or what we want from Ghost Recon. You know, I yeah. was like, really surprised, you know, because I I didn't see it like there, but they actually have the right, you know, so. So this is how we can change the game, you know, or like the people ask like the hey PVE only, you know, we were never thinking about it because the for me the complete experience is the PVE. VP, you know, yeah, yeah. So I want this spice there, but uh, if a lot of people want like the secure or care, care beer, you know, stuff, so so like the way, hey, why not? You know, it will not like the hurt anything. It's like the same, like the when people are saying that uh, the you should not have the same progress in the PVE, like in the PVE VP. So oh, yeah, you know, I don't think it's like the problem because like the uh, stop there, stop the, there. the AI and everything is so tough. That's a big note. That he personally thinks that PVE and PV, PVP is going to have this. He thinks that's not going to be a problem. I think that's going to be a huge problem. Uh, that's just me, though. Because, yeah, everyone that's our PvP, P, PvP sweats are just going to go PVE, do rush through all the quests, and then jump on PvP. I, I think that should be separated immediately. Same. So and, um, 
still my biggest concern is not enough pvp but uh i'd, I'd like not to go yeah. into that one too too yeah. much we don't we go into not time. enough pvp i will be here until 10 p.m yeah, yeah. And, it, and and we yeah. don't know how the pvp is gonna play out but we we will know in hopefully two days yeah but uh if we want to talk about that real quick of uh, the servers being linked uh i could give us like five minutes on that one and yeah. that that's a big one that i don't think any other game has done that before in no. that sense the only other it's... game that you that technically has done that before that's coming to mind is eso where what's the ESO? Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls Online. Online, where you basically oh, okay. have the same character and you go into like a war lobby. From what I remember, it's been a quite a few years, and that's your multiplayer portion, which your character okay. and all. But it's this is definitely not that because it's completely persistent. It's all the same yeah. map. You're not fast travel traveling anywhere, and that game is basically fast fast travel central. You know, there's yeah, yeah, it, it's totally different. No, it, it's just worrying me because then the PvP servers is just gonna be a PvP fest, basically. That's what yeah. I see if they don't separate it. If they separate it, they still have to do quest in the PvP thing instead of just jumping on PvE and then go PvP when they fix got gear and stuff. And there's like, oh no, I don't have any gear left. Just leave, join a PvE server, and don't, I don't have to worry about players and just AI. Like, it's... That's... it's got, I, that's so MMO like with like an arena mode. I don't like that idea whatsoever. I want PVE and PVP fully mixed together in the same server. I don't want yeah, them exactly. Yeah. Another no, thing no, 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 yeah. they could do is so multiple characters, that's still always an option. Don't do like Tarkov. You know, multiple characters. I would like multiple characters. I will not be playing PVE with my multiple character, but I might be doing more PVP. With uh, two or three characters, whatever, you know. Um, I, I think there should be six character slots. One for PvE, one for PvP, basically. Yeah, something so like that. You, he, so if you play Mitra's guy, for example, that guy you can yeah. like play on PvE and PvP, but it's, it's the same guy, basically. It just An have two different save states. Another thing you could do, though, is... So this would be tied directly to the missions. So you would have faction-specific missions, but the non-faction-specific missions would be in generalized, uh, generalized to your um, profile, your complete profile of all your characters, right? And then whatever other character you choose, that would be your own progression uh, portion with like your other faction or whatever. And you would be doing those faction missions specifically i'm not sure how they would work this around the lore it would probably have to be the actual missions regular missions would be a separate lore portion i it'd be difficult especially since they have 150 missions already they'd probably have to redo all of them <laughs> if bringing this into the fold but that kind of gave me the idea because elder scrolls online you could have i think up to six or eight different profiles and that's all linked to one individual profile bank account in within the game and all that and you just choose different characters you know but you can't choose on the fly you choose at the main menu from what i remember and then go in and it's just all the same um character shit from what i remember anyways and i could be getting that wrong yeah. but that's what i remember I think the coolest thing would be have just two characters, one for PvE and then for one for PvP. So you have That's to cute. choose we, which faction I'm going to play this wipe. Okay, I'm going to play Mithras this wipe. <clears throat> Next wipe, I'm maybe going to play something else, or I'm going to play Mithras again. I think That's that cute. would be better. Uh, it, and, it would uh, also yeah. force people to stay with one yeah. faction instead of, oh, look, they're doing better over here if, like, say... Yeah. They bring in the whole zones uh, and territory control, and if they make and that into a bigger thing like Helldivers, where it's server-wide. And, and server browser, because yeah. I'm guessing you're going to choose gotta a be character. The first yeah, no, no, what, what, what I mean is, what if you can choose, your, if you have three characters, one Mithras, one uh, the other guys, you and you choose. I want to play on this server because my friends play here often. 
They go yeah. in and it's like, oh no, CSI may is having better control. Are you just gonna switch from CSI? But if you lock, not lock it, you can still manually delete your character and then choose another faction. But you, then you lose all your progression and have to do it again. Uh, I think it should be like it should be like a one one wipe, wipe save. So every wipe your character gets deleted and you have to get uh, to choose again. Basically, do you want to play which faction? Because uh, that would make players actually it, it, it would be more fun. I think it would be because if if they add zones and stuff, everyone just gonna okay. If on this server I'm just gonna play CSI, on this server's gonna play that. It's yeah. more fun if they like get locked into Mithras that you sure you can delete your character and start a new in CSI or LRI, but that makes it more uh, more a decision instead of just eh, I'm gonna play whatever I want. Pretty much, but uh, that was a little bit over five minutes. Let's get this uh video going yeah. real quick again. The day for like the. You know, still have the hard times, you know. So, yeah. but maybe I'm wrong, you know, and we will change it, you know. So it's like the, it's a, I think it's life process. It's like the more like the life service where you are going somewhere, you know, the direction. Yeah. And, uh, but things could change, you know, it will not change completely, you know. Yeah, of course. Like the, if the people will ask, like the, hey, we want like the PvP maps because the combat is so fun. And if you want only PvP maps, maybe, you know, maybe we will just make them, you know. And then it will be pure extraction stuff in the, in the game, you know. So it's like the, a lot of things could happen. Yeah, so so on that same note, you have different perspectives, right, with, with the experience of the game. You have, like, the developers, you have your vision for what you want, and then, like, you know, you guys playing the game internally. And then you have the people who stream the game or play it all the time, you know, like, super seriously, hardcore. And then you have the experience of, like, the more casual day-to-day -day players. Do you have, like, a f strategy or a plan on how you'll stay in touch with those different groups and listen to them? Because... I think being <laughs> mean, out of touch is an like issue in this genre. Yeah. You mean like me, this podcast, just saying, plug? The complaining uh, from the players, like the, the, the guys making the game only for the influencers. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, everything is feedback, you know, it doesn't matter yeah. like who did it. Uh, no, it matters, you know, it's, of course, like, the, if somebody loved the Fortnite, then he tried the game, like, the our game, and he's, like, the complaining that it's, like, the too hard, we will don't make it, like, the Fortnite-ish, you know? Yeah. He wants cats, like, the, <laughs> as the whatever helmets, you know, it will not be there. So, uh, but the normal feedback, I think it doesn't matter who said it, we want to, like, the evaluate if it's set in our vision, and just go for it. Uh, we want to improve this game. We don't want to shift it, you know, to something else. You know, it's like the, it's a, of, I don't know, you know, if the, if the, if we will have the several, you know, I don't know how to say it, like the, if there will be a lot of people who will want to and really scream that uh, they want to change it to something different. I don't know, like the, what we will do. I hope not, you know, it's yeah. like the, I hope that everybody will help us to make this vision like the better, you know, not change it based on their personality. So like the, for example, with you guys, I think... Uh... Just real quick, uh, if Mara does listen to this, that's what's mo what mods are for. Period. If they want to change it completely to their vision, that's mods. Star Wars? Oh, okay. Mod. Period. Uh, it's like the, it's about like the, hey, the combat is bad, combat is like the good, you know, it's not feeling good, you know, it's like the, you should change this, that, but not like the, hey, you should change it to the extraction shooter because like those yeah. people want people don't change it you know there yeah. should be other guys who is doing it we have the different vision so yeah it's like the it's like the, the the thing is that a lot of stuff is around the real data it's very hard to like the balance it because there is yeah. real data, you know so we cannot make like the ak uh less powerful <laughs> it's like the, it's, it's, it's the same it's based on the real data we can tweak a little bit like the, the cavities or whatever but uh, there is like the very small like the chance you know we can uh, tweak a little bit the uh, animations but uh, yeah. this is what we didn't do like the you know like the saying like the ak should have the 2.5 seconds for the reload and the air 15 should have two point uh, whatever you know we just like the ask the guy like the, to make like the, the animations and we just make that you know it's like the and, and this is how we can do it and and like the, how we can do it in real life and this is what is it so so it's like the i'm pretty happy with it because like yeah. i need to like the tweak some numbers and like the think about it it's like the 
uh, we're trying to really like the you know to to get the info about the cavities for example and try to put them inside the game what we can tweak is the values you know we try to use the initial values from the real life you know yeah so it's the cost the same because the i think the real life is already balanced for us <laughs> <laughs> maybe it works you know yeah. but we don't know it's like the how many stuff you know there like will be a lot of like the exploiting things that something is like the more valuable and it's selling like the more and make the mistakes and it's like the respawning faster or it's like the more easy to get because there is less enemies so this is what we will tweak yeah the thing is that i want like the the, the thing is that uh, what we want to work with the people is about like the, their experience emotions you know what they feel yeah. The goal is like that they really experience good combat and like the great times and like the remo- re- how to say it like the that something they will like the recall in the past you know in the future you know it's like yeah. the, this is what we want it's like the uh, you know there could be some features like the okay missing the hold breath you know or mm. hold breath is too long because it's like the, then too easy so we can tweak it if the people will like to say it you know of course yeah but if somebody will say it. No, if you will say it only, for example, the Veritas, okay, <laughs> yeah. he's complaining about everything, so whatever. Yeah, you know. no, uh, I definitely but- think that, like, that's a tough challenge for you guys, because I think, you know, it's, a, it's we live in a weird spot where, you know, everybody wants, like, open development game developers that are open to feedback, which you guys have already shown that you are, which is great, but there's a limit to that, right? Kind of like what you're saying, we don't want to turn this game into a battle royale just because some people on Reddit said so. But when you have a lot of people playing your game, the feedback that comes up might help you make micro adjustments that you maybe weren't thinking. Yep. And finding that balance can be hard because if we say we're open to feedback, we'll change what you want to change, then people almost feel this ownership. Well, it's like, well, I want you to change this, so you should change it. It's like, well, that's not always how it works. And so that's definitely, you know, mm-hmm. good luck <laughs> with you guys interpreting all that feedback. But I do think that ultimately most people are excited about that attitude that you guys are at least trying to have that where you like, we do have a vision. We do know what we want this game to be a few years from now. But at the same time, like you said, our priority is that you guys have fun. So we want to also be listening and make, you know, make those adjustments as we go. So um, I think that's, I think that's valuable. I would love to hear your thoughts. Speaking of like feedback, I feel like the, 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 the number one thing is always going to be PVP. You know what I mean? Balancing PVP, how much PVP, how little PVP. I'd love to hear because I know that you've, you guys have made it clear, it's no um, secret that this is a PvE VP game, that the PvE is going to be the main threat, there's going to be more PvE on the map, and, and there's going to be a lot. But um, how do you guys see the PvP component? Um, and uh, are you guys going to... W- will there be, like, map design catalysts, where, like, maybe places like this have really good loot, and that might be a natural progression? I always think of, like, DayZ, really big map, and you basically always knew you could get into PvP in the Northwest Airfield because that was where all the best loot was. So if you didn't want PvP and you avoided that, you could kind of go mm-hmm. about your day and, and avoid PvP for the most part. And so is there do you guys are you guys thinking like that too, where we can provide places where the people that want PvP can get it pretty consistently, but other places where you're probably less likely. Maybe you're never completely safe, but there's a little bit of that kind of map flow mm-hmm. to it. We were uh, or we are focusing mostly on the PvE experience now. Yeah. Uh, and with this PvP spice, you know, yeah. And um, uh, I think the, our main goal around the first year is build the main systems, you know. Yeah. And um, and make the game stable, uh, run fast, you know, put a lot of things together. We want to. We will have to fix a lot of things because people will complain. I hate like the when the when the guys are adding new features and not fixing the old bugs and they are there forever, you know. <clears throat> so. We didn't think too much about the PvP. I think it will not happen very often. It will maybe happen in some of the choke points, where it's like the good loot, you know, as you said. Yeah. But I think the PvP guys should will be will have to be very patient, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like the, I think the it's good for the role playing for the some sniper, you know. He will take like a lot of coffee and he will just sit somewhere for the hour, you know, <laughs> and then maybe he will kill somebody, you know. But uh, air wing. <laughs> Tower. But, because I don't think that the people will like the camp the landing zones, you know. There is a lot yeah. of landing zones. And, yeah. like, uh, maybe they will learn the patterns of the of the helis, you know. Maybe they will learn like the the hitting, the shooting, and like they'll go there and try to like okay, they are going to the D zone or that zone and wait for them and for ambush. Which would yeah. be pretty cool, you know. It's like it's just the ambush, it's not like the camping. Um I this this is like the uh, this is some kind of the social experiment basically. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, fair. <laughs> And uh, uh, we want to focus like the real, on, really on the PvP, PVE guys, you know, yeah, like the yeah, guys yeah. who wants to don't play the Tarkov. It's not like the exchange of Tarkov, you know, and then like the move to the like the maybe better game or different game, whatever. When we were done with this, maybe we will implement the PVE only. You know, I was thinking, um, it's not leaking, but there is option like the maybe take the 
these kind of the areas of interest and make them like the small maps you know and like to just put the pvp there you know there is yeah. other options you know or maybe increase the players you know uh, in the in the map you know and and do it so that's like there was something in the future yeah i think that's fair i think that's a fair answer that you guys know what you want which is it to be a pve focused game and that especially in the beginning your focus is on creating a stable experience mm. i think that's a really fair i think people might hear that and go oh this isn't pvp whatever i don't want to play and that's fair like because people but like i think you can't really i think nobody can be too mad that your focus is creating a stable experience that works first and then you know what i mean because if you do if you have a lot of pvp but you're not working on a stable experience the yeah. pvp player will just complain that the pvp isn't fun because it's not stable so I, so I think that like I think that's fair and I think that you guys know what you want to do and that's good for a lot of people to hear because I think there are a lot of gamers out there that are just addicted to PvP. They just want to shoot everybody. You're on my team, I want to shoot you. You're on the other team, I want to shoot you. And that gray zone might not be that experience in the beginning. Um, but I think that real. that's good to hear that your priority at the beginning is just kind of like, yeah, almost like social experiment. What are people going to do? Where are they going to go? But is the experience working and is it stable? Mm -hmm. I think that's good. I think that's fair. We were always thinking about that we are building the sandbox, you know, it's like you just create the sandbox with some kind of the rules and, and then you just like to let the people like to do that something. It's not mm -hmm. like that we are thinking about the, it's not single player, you know, you are not creating the experience every few meters and like the, he should jump and like yeah. the, you know, whatever. And there should be AI and after you kill the few AI there should be treasure, you know, and then like the again, 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 you know. So, so it's like the, it's sandbox. Yeah. You know? yeah. If, and if they will just improve it, you know, make the more features there and like just let the play in the sandbox as they want. Yeah. You you can't talk about PDP without the giant elephant in the uh FPS world, which is cheating. Um <laughs> that's a thing that like I if I want to make a game, I'll probably make a game sometime in my life, but I've basically decided I'll never make a multiplayer game because it seems like <laughs> it seems like an impossible thing to, to fight. Yeah. Tell us everything about Anti-cheat. <laughs> All of it. Everything. everything. Uh, to help the cheaters, right? Uh, hey, it's like the, we, we know, like the, it's like the pain in the ass, you know? And the thing is that then, uh, like the, when there is rumors about the cheating, that every guy who killed you is cheater, right? <laughs> like the, in, since like the first day of the Counter-Strike, you know? It's like the, nobody thinks that he died because somebody was better, but because he was cheating, you know? Which yeah. is pretty bad experience. And this is what we don't want to, you know, it's like, of course, we move to the PVE because there are, we're thinking that there will be less, uh, less uh, cheaters, you know, but uh, we know that because it's a high stake game, it's like the people yeah. who want to cheat or like the, you know, this kind of the uh, gather the item, items for the people who are just wants to buy them. I don't remember how it's called now. Oh, yeah, RMT. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we don't want to let the people ruin your experience, you know, somehow. We have like the, we're trying to make, um, you know, it's like the more dedicated, uh, like the client server, a client and dedicated server, like the architecture. We are trying to like the validate a lot of stuff. We are doing the things differently than, uh, for example, some Unreal games. So, for mm. example, our bullets are really uh, simulated on the server. You know, it's not like the, that uh, they are just validating hits on the client. <laughs> this is what we did always, like the, since 2000. Uh, we're trying to, of course, like, the, you know, if they will, they can somehow thing he just said cheat, there, but by it way, should not be like the super crazy, you know? Yeah, I was thinking about like, it. Like, it's not client-based where you hit, you mm. shoot, and then the server react, and he in the server decides if it's the hit or not. It's yeah. gonna be annoying for, uh, against people with high ping, though. I hope they, like, uh... Ping abusers? Like, yeah, restrict like how much ping you have to have on a server. Like, I don't know, 100 mm. max? 100? Or 120? Okay. 100, 120? Because usually you, usually a normal person plays with a ping with between 40 and 60. So, yeah, double, yeah. so double that, so double that, so like up to 130 maybe. But I don't, I don't want to get random spikes in my ping and get kicked because of it. No, no, it, it would it probably consecutive have pain. assist. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. so if it if it's detecting like a spike longer than ten seconds, it's going no, to. Uh, I would say a minute. A minute. A is minute. Good. Well, people yeah. will just toggle uh, it off and toggle it back on. Then. I mean, yeah, that could that could be a thing. That's all things they can mess Minimize. around with and stuff. They could tweak the uh, values, like he stated earlier. Earlier. 
but uh, if you I run don't think that's something that's hard to implement, honestly. Yeah, and if you run 120 tick servers, I hope they do. Yeah, uh, it's gonna you're be really, even... really set on these 120 tick servers. I've heard you bring it up yes. like a billion times, Chris. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, exactly. I'm for it though, man. I I want high quality yeah. servers. Yeah. Um, high quality game, you, high quality okay. servers. Dude, so it's, if you have quality great. players, so if you have low quality servers, you have to have client based. That's just how it is. If you have yeah. low quality servers, that's how you have to run it. If you, with he saying it's server based, most likely it's high quality servers. We can hope it is, but if it's low quality servers with that uh, with um, with that, it's gonna be, I don't know. It's gonna be sketchy at best. Yeah. Unless it's a, uh, I, if it's against players, it's gonna be very hit and miss. If it's against AI, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Um. Just. Uh, sorry, I had a yawn. Um. Take into account his posture. Also, he's laid back, cool, calm, collected. Uh, Dude, he. He's confident. On this game, just saying, you could tell, you could see it in his face. His also, it could be the voice. fact that when this was recorded, it was like 8 p.m. for them. Uh, um, yeah. I'll get yeah, started yeah. at like 10 Eastern or 11 Eastern, I think. Yeah, could be a long day, but it, I feel he is very confident. Look, look I know he's confident. Statement he stated against Nikita about yeah, they're creating the know, experience, not the frustration. It's they it's can, like it's like he has experience mistakes. being with shooters. Yeah, exactly. They they can make uh, mistakes. Like they run server based, but they have poor quality servers in the beginning. That could be a bad thing. There's a hundred percent why be if you're gonna mistakes. If you're gonna listen to us and watch this, we use pre order, and you can afford the good servers. Yeah. <laughs> the same. And the stand the uh, different editions. The editions. Just, yep. Just the different editions, I think, would blow them out of the water. They would be like, unless we have unless, so much money, we don't know what to do now. <laughs> unless they are having a server contract because they're locked in. Then. Uh, I mean, that's, that would that's, be stupid to enter something like that with some shit quality servers that bad. Yeah, but like, if you're getting on a yeah. server contract, you got to make sure that servers are going to be valid for the next five, six years. Yeah, no, so like Han Showdown, they didn't know if the game was going to be hit or miss, so they didn't go in with high quality servers immediately because you have to sign a couple of years, uh, most uh, like oftenly, because the server providers want to have have their clients locked in for a couple of years at least so they know they can get the income during these years yeah that's the thing right so if the, so Han Shodan locked in with poor quality servers and the game exploded in the last two years and now everyone is whining their servers are shite so here's the they're locked in they can't and they can't upgrade for some reason but um you Let's hope they run high quality servers. And <laughs> here's what I want to avoid: is a Helldivers two issue, like what happened with Helldivers two, where they yeah, were so yeah. successful that they couldn't. That the amount of players that wanted mm -hmm. to play couldn't play. Yeah. Yeah, that was very bad. Yeah. Which I have videos on my uh, YouTube about how to fix those whenever they came up. No. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Well, now it's not an issue because the player base has dropped. Yeah, there's still a strong player base, but it's nowhere near the numbers yeah. it was during its release. Oh yeah, I I, I completely dropped. I, I believe Helldivers in a minute. I do not have time to even freaking play games right now. I'm too focused on making videos for Greyzone Warfare. <laughs> and getting married. <laughs> yeah. Why is this man not VIP'd? <laughs> nah, nah, stop. I had some people ask me today on that video um I just released today about VIP. Like, bro, I mean I wish, but I mean, is what it is, you know. Um, I guess I'll continue. You know, we have, we cannot control everything on the server. You know, if he will yep. like speed up animations or like the, he can like the fa make uh, more faster shooting, and because the lag 
uh, both uh, like the bullets can arrive like the N1 tick, for example, because server is ticking only 30 FPS. So you cannot like to see the delays or whatever. He can he can like the sending some packets from the client. You have to trust it. And then uh, where had to come like the, some other like the solution, you know, so like the machine learning, you know, which can find these kind of the things, you know, which can find like the that you are using the macros or whatever, and or you ha your behavior is like the not humanish mostly, you know, or yeah. you have some kind of the pattern. I think the machine learning can like the can uh, work with the ESP, you know, radars, you know, because they know that you are following them. We are planning to have the this kind of the thing if you are following and like the looking at the players who are behind the behind the walls you know mm -hmm. and uh maybe we will mark him and just kick him out you know there is a lot of options how to do it uh, we don't want to be like the i think the machine learning is the is the way to go it's not like the creating super how uh, hardcore is like the hard very show film very you know whatever it's like the i think the machine learning can fight them you know and um so so we are trying we are working with one group for one company and we will see how it works because it's out uh, it's like the unknown field you know, mm -hmm. I hope it will not flag the good guys, you know, <laughs> and then everybody will say like the, hey, whatever. And um, we have the, of course, the easy anti-cheat, you know. So we hope that like the multiple solution will help us. And uh, of course, there could be some reporting. We can like to check the guy, like the how he's progressing and, and then maybe do something. So let, let, let's see, you know, yeah. it's like a, I think that the first few days it will be OK if you will. You know, we promised the the influencers uh, the early build. You know, like the before the release. Mm -hmm. So if you will don't leak it to the various guys or hacker guys, <laughs> then there will not be cheats. You know, at yeah, the yeah. one week. You know, so you got to so insert then... insert in uh, you know self destruct buttons for all of the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so if someone else gets it, you'll know that it was like the build you sent to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we go. will do watermark there, and then we will do <laughs> yeah. like a big cows of it. You know, so yeah. So, are they? Yeah. Are how are you going to be? I don't know anything about how you guys are planning on doing servers. I know that that's something that has been in the conversation recently with Tarkov and cheating. If like, if I could run my own server, I could moderate it. And the moment someone is remotely sketchy, I'm not banning them from the game. I can just ban them from my server and you can have like a community sort of server. Is that something you guys are planning on doing or will you own all of the servers and manage them? Uh, not in the beginning. It's not like the, in our, like the, you know, we don't have the resources. We would be happy to release the game without bugs, you know, and like the optimization. Yeah. And there will be definitely missing this kind of the features. We would like the uh, support of uh, these guys who are renting the servers so you can rent our server on their machines. So we are floating the cost a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely we will support the custom servers, you know, so you can like the moderate it, have the community, people who play it, you know, there. And, and let's see, this is what we want. Yeah. We even thinking about. I love the thing in the squad when you can, you know. I don't know the guy who is streaming it like the very. It's like the he's commenting the fights in the squad. The eye know? in the sky. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is so awesome, you know. That would be so cool in the gray zone that somebody can like to make the videos, you know, and talk about it. Hey, guys are coming from the right side, you know, and there is this one. That would be so awesome, you know. So having having a free camera kind of thing yeah. is. I'm telling you, it's genius because it makes a million people want to make videos and content yeah. about your game. If th the moment you can do like a nice panning shot over a town, it's infinitely yeah, yeah, more yeah. interesting than having to like free look up with your gun down <laughs> and take a screen. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sure. It's something what we are planning, you know, it's like the on the mobile we, when we wanted to move to the eSport, uh, we were always thinking about the like the influencers or like the why the people are like the why the eSports are uh, so successful. Yeah. And uh, it's mostly about the viewers, you know, it's not actually about the about the game, how fun is for the players, but yeah. how fun is to watch it, you know. So we want to make the, some support for the for you guys and for the, everybody so they can make like the, some nice videos and whatever, some exciting, not just somebody shooting and dying. Awesome. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got to go. Um, I know we're only 13 or 13 minutes away from the end of the video. I'm going to finish this up later, but uh, I got to go do something. I'll be back in like 30 minutes. All right. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, while we pause, we could just touch base on this. So basically like an orbital camera, I guess, mid game or, uh, or you just join a random server and you can do this. It, that would be very cool. You just joining a random server, not even your buddy's server. You could do so many different things. You could explore the map, all of that stuff. Um, yeah. it's good points and there's bad points. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's very, very bad points. Like, how the hell are they going to do this without like you joining a buddy people, server yeah. and telling other people exactly your buddies where the the enemies are? You know, yeah. 
Uh, it's I just guess any uh, one of you have on the friends list, but if you do that, you just delete your friend and then add him back. Like, I don't know. Uh, I guess it would have to be a random server. Just have to be a random server, and you don't know which server you're on, basically. Uh, so, yeah, yeah bas basically that. You join a random server, you don't know what server it is or the name of the server, because then your friends can join it. So that's the only way to do it. But that would be fun. Just fly around, like, oh, they're fighting over here. Let's look and, like, do content by that. That would be pretty cool. Um, I'm I'm really happy that they're trying to implement things or at least have the idea based around yeah. helping content creators make better better videos. That is yeah. a huge thing. Also about already talking about like a community server type thing and you know just being able to kick people out who they think are cheating or stuff uh stuff like that. Um, I already know that this whole community type server thing, uh, IRAM will have up to three of them at launch, hopefully. Um, once we get EA and a general direction of when that's going to happen down the roadmap, I'm probably going to open up a, uh, just something where people can start donating money to, and that's going to go strictly straight to the servers. Um, I know there's a few of us in the community already that could definitely put money towards it. I think just with 10 of us, we'd be able to put up uh, the three servers. But uh, donations would yeah. be wonderful, and those donations would obviously grab you a dedicated 100% spot into the servers, obviously, with yes. the expansion in the future. Uh, I can't remember which one of that did that oh yeah it was for the private servers for world of warcraft that did that uh some russian guy had his own server so you paid one dollar basically and you got a guaranteed like you you could skip the queue basically yeah um they do this I'm in a joined. squad also so oh yeah okay yeah that yeah. would be cool to have uh it's gonna be sucky though uh because what happens if the game is 75% or the server is 75% full with VIP guys that paid $1, let's say, to get the like, entrance, and the rest of the guys are just normal people, and then another VIP guy tries to join, is he's just going to say, oh, server's full, fuck you, or is that going to kick out uh, some random dude that's not paid for it? I hmm, that would be pretty sad, but uh... well, it it probably would basically be. So we do one server, right? We have the one server up and running, and it would have to be gauged on how many people would be in the or server, in all, uh, or how many people are in the community itself. Yeah, and it would be a Patreon subscription based type service. Yeah, but like, would you what? kick someone else out if you wanted to join the game? Would you do it, that? They it, just keep extra it, slots specifically for VIPs. It, it would be. Uh, what I'm okay, saying is so nobody's have, allowed yeah. who's not in the subscription service for these main three. Oh, in the oh, future. You mean in the future, oh, okay, we, so. with those subscribe, uh, with with those subscriptions, you would be able to do other servers for the community. But it's first oh, come first serve. Yeah, there's no whitelist. Okay, so it's not for Republic, only for paid players. Yes, which ah, okay. it would be obviously totally allowed, you know, because it's your server. You do as you want. You charge what you want yeah. to get in. Obviously, it would be. Basically, I'm just going to take the total amount and divide what that server would cost on a monthly basis, which would also be the Patreon subscription. And there you go. Done. And possibly just a little bit more on the back end. So in case if somebody leaves the subscription service, you know, if we end up getting a second server at that point, it's basically just for one person or now no people. You you kind of see where I'm going with that portion? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. 
I, and I don't think the servers would be that expensive. It, I'd say probably in the uh, realm of a hundred bucks a month or something. When I rented Black Ops Two, no, uh, Bla uh, yeah, the Black Ops like the first one, Call of Duty server, I paid thirty thirty bucks a month. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I there's multiple yeah. people already in the community that's probably going to be like, look here, start the server. Here's thirty bucks. Let's get it done, and all that yeah. shit, you know. But obviously, we're trying to build a huge community here. I've done it with Liquid Gaming in Squad. They have done an amazing job, and the servers are still going to this day. But Squad's different. It's boring. You have to seed the servers. Guess what? Grey Zone Warfare, they're persistent. Voila. Easy. Not a yeah. problem. You know what I mean? And it, it, there's just so much you can do with this. It, it's going to be so much fun. I, I don't even know what to say further, honestly. Uh, so, I guess I'll start the video again. <laughs> yeah. But the time will come, you know. Of course, and people yeah, will miss it. Oh, well, I was just saying, like, all this kind of stuff, like, I, we love having these conversations, but, you know, obviously, <laughs> this is, like, later stuff. Like, you guys have been, I, I just, for the people that are listening, I always like coming back to that, that, like, you guys, you know, at first, you're just trying to put this out in early access and learn and grow and, and grow on the game. So, you know, we can't expect all this kind of stuff immediately, but it's cool to hear that, like, private servers like that are even on the table, even in your minds later down the road, because I think there have been some games like DayZ that that has worked really well, where, um, or even, like, Grand Theft Auto, a lot of the RP being able to, kind of create communities of people that can help moderate and like tightly control that experience and maybe share some of that cost then can kind of create some cool experiences so um that is really cool to hear for sure yeah and people will misunderstand too what you're saying like or what we're talking about like we we're not talking about like making the game for content creators but adding in features that content creators more often than not you know would predominantly use means more people interested more people wanting to play and more i mean yeah you're basically putting in a way for us to advertise your game which means yeah. more purchases, oh, which means more development, okay. which means the game is better, right? Yeah, yeah. Pause, pause, pause. yeah exactly. Yep. The I thing would only be for the servers you own, basically. Yeah. The I in the sky thing. Yeah. So then, then everyone would be like all the mods and admins and stuff. No, yeah, use yeah, the yeah. Things. Not, so not a you don't have random any, servers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's not, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking great, and you. You get to spy on people who you think's cheating. Dude, it, it's, yep, that, I can't wait. I, I can wait, one. but I can't wait all at the same time. It, it, I'm so hyped. You know, I think, yep, yeah, exactly. It's not like the, you know, the, the main focus is, of course, on the players. You know, this game is about the players. It's not like the eSport thing, you know, so it's not actually about the viewers. But, uh, you know, we can make your life more easy. And uh, you are, you are, you know, we don't need to pay you like some big guy for something so if i will have to pay you i will never do it you know you will have to work on it but like the yeah we can like do this so and it's not only about like the established influencers you know everybody can do it you know everybody can like the, use it so i think it's worth it's um yeah but of course the player first the yeah player second you know so and uh ask you, the first, you know so. no yeah that's awesome that's a uh, that's really cool to hear um <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if you have any more. Well, I know, I know, I mean, I know, yeah. like, here, the, the thing that everybody asks that I, I'm going to ask, knowing full well we're not going to get an answer, but they'll <laughs> yell at me if I don't. Everyone wants to know when they can play. <laughs> and remember, this was basically, I think, roughly a week out, maybe five days from when they initially released uh, the 18th. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> you, want, like, you want like the, the, the Rick and others will kill me, you know? Yeah, I, 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 listen, I, I, I know, I know we're not getting an answer, <laughs> but okay. ask. they'll kill so, me if I don't ask. <laughs> okay, so we have the date, okay? We are still not sure if we will hit it. So the last thing That's what fair. we want is to postpone it, you know? It's like uh, there is still, uh, I don't know, like the 400 bucks. Uh, like the, from the P0 to the whatever, like the, some numbers for the very, like the you know the visual only things yeah 
uh, we want to be sure that it's, the game is very hard to test it because it's like so huge and uh, we don't have 100 testers, you know, so it will be a little bit, uh, you know, people should expect that it's early access, you know, it's like the early yeah. access, like the real early access. It's not like the early access after the seven years, you know, and uh, I think the content and the amount of the features which are already there is probably the one of the biggest early access ever, like there was a release, you know, yeah. and um, uh, we want to be sure that the game is not crashing, you know, that the game is running well. Yeah. And this is the, our, like the, the, now, like the, the, the biggest focus, you know, it's like yeah. the, we almost stop to adding the, the features, you know, I'm fighting with the last feature, which is really, I really hate it, you know, and <laughs> the releasing the empty brass, like the, from the, from the gun, exactly same, like the, what you actually fired, you know, and then you have this kind of the bolt, so you have to like the, exactly put it like the out, you know, and kick it out. Yeah. Then you have to load another, you know, from the, from the, uh, magazine, which is like the, some super cool in the normal FPS, but you can have the different ammo. They should look different, you know, with the different tips. So it's like, the, this is like the, you know, I hate this game sometimes, you know, it's just like the push too much, <laughs> like the so complicated to make the stuff. Yeah. And um, so this is one of the last feature, you know, we are focusing mostly now on the good communication when the shit happens, you know, we are disconnected, server crash, whatever. Mm. We are working on the, on the some like I think the last feature is uh, almost finished, and there is some missing things uh, about the squads because our squads are working differently than every other squad. You can join to the leader to the different instance. You can receive the invite for the squad when you are playing in the different instance. You know, you, and whatever. So it's like the working gotcha. differently. So this means like the, a lot of issues. Uh, we of course have to be sure that like the, your profile is properly safe, you know, but we cannot save it with the every action because it will be just like the whatever. We need yeah. to optimize the bandwidth uh, because we are paying for the bandwidth, you know, we don't want to lose every money because the bytes, you know, and or megabytes. Uh, so it's like this is our main focus and we want to be sure because if the one crash is happening to us, it could happen 1,000 or 10,000 in the players, you know, depending on the on the success of the game. So we have to be really sure that everything that we can find we killed, you know, or we fixed. So this is why I cannot announce it. Uh, I would be like the really happy, <laughs> like really, you know, it's like the. <sighs> I cannot say. It. You, I mean, <laughs> you you only get one first impression, yeah, and part yeah, of that yeah, yeah, first yeah. impression is yeah. how the game feels to play, and if it crashes, and if it has bugs, and whatever. And the other is if you're able to make good on your promises, which includes a release date. You know, if it's late and then yeah. late and then late and then late, people will lose confidence yeah. and whatever. So, like, I totally, I totally get it. Yeah. The other thing, like that, because this success, we didn't experience or didn't expect like the this stuff. You know, we like the it's like it make us like the really scary. You know, like the the, the you guys are waiting for it. You know, <laughs> I'm afraid of it. You know, it's like the, you will start to play it and what they will say. You know, it's like the, now it's not under control. You know, they can do like the, anything. What yeah. they want. You know, the people who will start to stream it and it will crash in the real time streaming. You know, it's like the it's like the, then there is a. Uh, like a lot of people waiting to buy it in the first day, so they will try to immediately jump on it. You know, we don't know yeah. if we are prepared for the servers. You know, we don't know exactly how many concurrent players uh, like they can play it. You know, or like they will play it. It's like the some numbers with the uh, hell divers are fucking scary. You know, like how many people <laughs> yeah. play. It, you know, or palm diver. You know, it's like palm vote. Yeah, it's like the. We really don't know what can happen now. You know, yeah. and uh, and uh, if you will make a good job and you will love it. Then like the okay, that's even the worst for us because there will be more people, you know, and then we more <laughs> servers, you know, we will just don't sleep, you know. And yeah. uh, more crashes basically, you know, more crash reports, you know. So so we want to be sure that everything is perfect. When we see the light on the end of the tunnel, yeah, it basically mean that the we will get the less bug than we are fixing. So it's starting to going down. You know, yeah. and uh, then we will see like the hey, okay, yeah, we know that we can probably hit the day or not, you know. So that's that's fair. Like and and like I said, I don't think we expected a, a a date from you. You know, we just had to ask. But I think that that's. I even think though that that response is really good for people to hear because it really is a weird spot for gaming where like you almost can't win because if you wait and you put out a game that works really well, you know, you have the Helldivers experience where like no indie developer could realistically expect that a million people want to play their game, but they made a good game and a million people want to play and then that creates issues because now you have too many people that want to play. But if you put out a game that isn't good, nobody wants to play your game. And it's like such a weird, but the fact that you guys are even just considering the possibilities and trying to set yourself up for the best launch, you know, whatever that is, whether it's a small launch, a medium launch, a huge launch, whatever, um, I think it's good. I think the only thing worse than not having a release date is having a release date that never gets hit. And so I yeah. think you guys are doing the right thing, you know what I mean, by not saying anything as opposed to just saying something and then it moves and then saying it and then it moves and it's to erode that trust in the beginning before the game is even out. So 
it's, uh, I think it is the, fascinating to hear. I think we somehow wrongly communicated it. You know, it's like the, we were always thinking before, like the, around the Q1 and Q2. You know, but for some reason, we were uh, communicating more like the publicly Q1. You know, and. Uh, this is something like the what we like the school a little bit. We also didn't expect like the, that so many people will like the uh, read every word, you know. So I will put something on the tweet, and immediately from it is like the YouTube video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's like the. But I think it's like the still better than announce the game and then say like the we will like the release it in the three years, you know. So it's like the, it's still I think the since November, so it's like the six years or six months or five months, you know, something like this. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People, like... people will forget about everything if we will release the game and it will be good. People will forget about like the everything what we said before, you know, or what we screw or that they they will have to wait or whatever. They will just be happy to play it. You know? Seeing what happened with No Man's Sky. <laughs> is is something yeah. worth it's something worth learning from yeah. and actually you know what i'll send you something that i actually put together for a video i never made about like the rise and fall of no man's sky or sorry the fall and rise because now the game is fantastic yeah. and everybody loves it and it's a comeback story whereas originally right it was this massive failure and a huge part of that is communicating and how difficult it is to be in your position and communicate with the community and the media and have and yeah. be understood um but i think most people who watch this uh would would describe you as as based i would at least say that which is basically um keep doing what you're doing which is just yeah. being honest down to earth and like reasonable uh and you'll you'll probably uh you'll probably do well yeah thank yeah. you thank you i agree so um yeah i mean i don't know did you have any other questions or topics that we don't want to take too much of your time yeah no i don't um, i don't think so you've already been very generous you just, you just delayed the game by the one hour and a half <laughs> yeah we we delayed the game by an hour and a half well uh, we appreciate it um no seriously thank you so much for uh for taking the time to do this it like it, it means a lot to us and, and to the community to be able to kind of just like peek behind the curtain a little bit and and get some questions answered i think uh you know we know you know we as the content creators as the podcast we know that we, we don't want to put you guys in a weird position we're excited about the game we ask questions we don't want to create a situation where you answer a question and then you're held to this some reddit post was like on the podcast he said that we know it's a balance and so we try our best to you know kind of position that as well that you know it uh, it really is a favor to us that you came on and are willing to talk about the game. You're passionate about it. We kind of, you know, represent a bunch of gamers that are also passionate about it and excited. So uh, we really do. Uh, thank you so much for for taking the time to do this. Okay, yeah. thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You know, it's like so. That's pretty much the end. Um, I know that was I a think long he says one. Something else. Oh, okay, okay. They're always good to talk about the games. I love it. I you know, to it talk. exactly. Yeah. It's like the second thing, you know, first it's like to work on it, but then like to talk about it. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can do like the, another stuff after the after the release to like yeah. uh, beautiful. Know, maybe I will say like, hey guys, it's super great, you know, or like the, <laughs> well, you know, I was like full of the bullshit, you know. Sorry guys. So absolutely, okay. absolutely, you're welcome anytime to talk yeah. about anything. So thank you again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Cheers, guys. See, See you later. later. Yeah. Okay, that was it, yeah. Okay, so basically, he just may do another podcast with them yeah. as soon as the game comes out. That would be absolutely wonderful. Just a few things that I want to uh, touch base on is I 100% agree with Veritas and Jesse. Just, Mara, keep doing what you're doing, but also listen to your own words. And that's basically full send it. You know, uh, don't be scared. Full send it. And that's in relation to, obviously, multiple editions and the pre-order. I know it's a good idea. It you, you basically when you know when you have a date for EA. Basically. Yes, obviously. Um, but pre-order nonetheless. Um, you need to come up with a very appetizing price for a pre-order, which is... It should be a few dollars less, probably three to five dollars less than the standard edition whenever, you know, it, it would uh, full release, I would think, right? A standard twenty nine ninety nine, then the upgrade where you get a little bit early release on all the... Uh, uh, I'm talking about like, pre-order, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about pre-order as well. Okay. So the standard edition, twenty nine ninety nine, and the one above that is like... 40 maybe like 45 and then ultimate edition 80 or whatever 
Yeah, something kind of like that. But definitely, if, if you do do a pre-order, it'd probably be better to have it at a little bit cheaper price so you could gauge more on the community and how much um, how much people are looking for this game, basically. I know there's 80,000 or so uh, that was stated earlier for the watch list. That's, that's a pretty yeah, that's huge a lot. number. That's, that's a huge number, dude. Um, yeah, and then fifty thousand in the actual uh, uh, Discord server. They might they might not all be like uh, on that pre-order portion too. Yeah, the, the, it could be different. Uh, I mean, I'd say hundred thousand people's interested in this game. Let's just pretty much cap it at that. Yeah. Um, I'm and very interested to see the sales that's... big time. I want to see those sales. See what happens if it's like the full eighty thousand, all that. Uh, yeah, but but if you take like half of that, like a half of a hundred, and just take the standard edition, if it was like twenty nine ninety nine, that's like one one million and something. Like yeah. it's it's I don't know how much that is in developing though. One million might be not a lot, but it would yeah. cover the service though. And like if like if a hundred thousand or fifty thousand players buy this and they only have servers for 20 they're like okay let's put all that money for the servers then because if so many people bought it or pre-ordered they know about how many people will play it basically yeah it's it's gonna be pretty big no matter what um another thing to touch base on which is pretty much my last thing it, it's been a long podcast and i think this is really great information that was stated it's basically confirmed that you're going to be able to join your friend from a different instant. Not sure how this is going to look. What do you mean? If you... If you're in server one at, like, say, the airfield, and then you join your buddy, will you be in server two at the airfield? Or do you have to go oh. back to main base? Stuff like that. Main base, yeah. I yeah, think, I, think I think it'd be I... best for main base, but you should be able to get into a semi-safe location and then leave while still in the map somewhere to join a friend. Perhaps your friend's like, hey, look, I'm doing a mission here, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in the area. Let me join you. Meet me at this location, and then let me join you now. Stuff like that. That would be very, very, very cool. You know, because I'm, bring I'm going to bring it back to Fallout 76 again. It's the same <laughs> shit. Is the same shit as Fallout 76. You leave, you're in the same instance, but a different server, period. Yeah, but that's and, a problem, though. Yeah, it's a problem. If, if you, as the player, decide, oh, yeah, I think I'm safe right here, and then you made a missed call that you're not safe, that's on no, you. No, I don't talk about that uh, problem. I'm talking about, oh, they have a chest here? Okay, what's the safest location from this chest? Let's say it's a hundred meter mm. there on the attic in that house. Okay, let's go there. Just switch server or hot swap servers. Oh yeah. Because that that's the problem that had a seventy six actually. Yeah, no, uh, I know. I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I would love that, but I think the best one would be straight to main base. But you should be able to join on your friends. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so that should be a, a thing that you can put into their team. There's another way you could fix that. Basically, Fallout 76 is not this game, and you're not going to be able to hold a bunch of shit on you. That's one thing. No, 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 no. But if you just go for a specific item that drop in that area in in big chests, then you know, like, okay, it's a uh, uh, let's say it's an AS Val or a specific weapon that only drops in this area. You can just farm that specific weapon until you have enough, and then go back to base. Basically, that's what I mean. Sure, there, too, I there, guess, there, yeah. there, there, there is the risk to they get killed, but if you farm specific weapons, like that's gonna be a huge thing, or a specific like boss or whatever. Like, oh, the boss isn't spawn on my server. I'm just gonna hot swap server until I find the boss. Like. Uh, or oh, there's a money drop here on this specific spot or whatever. Like, there's probably gonna be stuff like that. So I don't think hot swappable should be a thing. 
Um, There's also other ways you could fix it, like every oh, yeah, yeah. 30 minutes or an hour, you could switch a server, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Just some yeah, simple stuff I so think soft. that could be yeah. fixed in the back end. And I honestly don't think there's going to be any such thing as like farmable um like weapons and stuff. I I don't no, really I think, think the bosses would the, be the, boss, the farmable. Yes. Thing. The the boss uh, I feel would be the more uh, so uh farmable thing, but I don't know. The, we just uh, have to see. Or the cause uh the devs in the playtest actually show the players the specific like you know the weapons case it all was in the same spot i don't know if that was just for the test or if that's actually a spawn yeah we will probably see that on the 18th if that's an actual spawn if there is an actual like spawn that's always there swapping servers might be an id as well you just run to that thing then you okay and you get it, you quit the server, and then join another server. So there might be a thing to swap servers <laughs> just for a specific crate. That too. Or, yeah. Uh, I feel we pretty much covered it all, really. Uh, yeah. It, it went by a, a lot faster than what I thought it was going to be at the beginning, but yeah, uh, the, yeah, we're sitting the, at like the, uh, late, 3 hours, 20 minutes. Yeah, the, late, the later half was... Uh, yeah, a lot they, faster. They... Yeah, because they said everything that should be said, basically. Yeah, straight uh, to the point. But, um, yeah. All right, boys. A hey, join Iran, you know? And, uh, don't forget to like, comment, <laughs> and subscribe. And we'll see you in the, in the next one. Stay tactical and remember precision over chaos.